Look at it. Look at this. <laughs> so this is now in the marketplace for like $10. It looks like uh, we have our first amphibious ultralight. <laughs> I have no idea how to fly this. This is going to be great. I had so much fun flying the other one that... I mean, how could this not be even better? Hey, Samuel. All right, uh, let's figure this out then. All right, are there any checklists? Nope, no checklists, but there's only like two buttons, so... Oh, this must be the fuel uh, selector. That's off, right? So I assume that's on. Master switch on. I'm not sure what this is. Let's turn the key. It's on. All right. I can't move the drone camera anymore somehow. All right, let's try that again. Nope. Hmm. Drone camera. It killed the drone camera when I turned it on. Oh, well, it actually has a parking brake. <laughs> We're just here near the gate. This is normal. All right, I'm not sure what the... Let me take a look at the other internal cameras. So that's definitely the fuel uh, cutoff switch. And so we just have the master switch. We have a heading indicator. RPMs and a fuel quantity. Let's go ahead and top that off. There we go. Um, that looks to be a GoPro mounted there. <laughs> That's realistic. All right, the rest of these are just some different uh, camera angles for the instrument presets. I'm not sure what, what happened with the drone camera. Let me try to reset it up here. Reset position. Nah, it has locked me out of moving the drone camera. Maybe it'll uh, wake back up once we get going. All right, do we even have a radio in this thing? No, <laughs> we don't have we don't have a radio at all. So we're not getting uh, we're not even able to ask for permission to take off. So. Yeah, you know, we're taxiing here. Coming through, everyone. Do you think they'd be upset if I just took off from here? I mean, they probably just want me to get out of here as soon as possible. Oh, yeah, this thing is definitely going to go in the water. So I just picked a, uh, a random island near the Bahamas. Maybe part of the Bahamas. I'm not sure. I just randomly picked something off the coast of Florida. Near Nassau. Um, forget what airport I chose, but... I just chose something near water to test this thing out real quick. So there are no, um, as far as presets for the cameras, this is the only one I'm hitting up and down on my hat on my uh, stick. And usually there's like a lean forward view or a lean back view. Those don't seem to exist. We have glance left and right. And when I go down twice, I get into the instrument presets. Um, 
So the first one is the fuel selector. The second one, so this would be control two on the keyboard, is our instruments here. So we just have our heading indicator. Let's see if this thing even works. Oh, wow. So, wow, that's really hard to see. So the plane in the middle of it turns. Uh, the outside of it stays the same. It's almost like looking at like an NDB uh, instrument or something like that, or um, an ADF, I mean, where uh, the background is static or, you know, turnable. All right, that's cool. And then as far as our speeds, are, is there anything, in, are there arcs? So there's just red at 7,000 to 8,000 RPM. All right, we probably need like 10 feet to take off, so let's see how it goes. All right, looks like we took off uh, at who knows what speed, because we don't know what speed we're at. All right, let's see if there's a pitch trim on this. Um... Yes, it looks like they're, huh? Can't tell yet, actually. I'm, I'm trimming up right now. Let's see what we got. Yeah, I think there is trim. Let me see if I can see the trim tab on this. If you hear any noises behind me, there's a dog running around behind me right now. Uh, the dog has left. I don't see a pitch trim tab like physically is there just a beeping sound um, but pitch trim does seem to work yeah I'm trimming up and down you can see the trim down here uh, the third person view too This is, uh, this is interesting. Why does the ground look so flat right now, too? Yeah, I think what's happening is there's like a, whoa. It requires a lot of, uh, a lot of action here to turn to the right. Yeah, that sounded like stall warning. Let me pitch up and test that again. Yep. Yeah, that's a stall warning. It takes, some. Um, so I'm using, a the... I'm using the Thrustmaster TCA side stick, and I have to, this is it almost completely to the right. It takes a lot of input to get it to move left and right, which probably makes sense given that it's just this bar that you're moving left and right with your hands. Um, looks like it requires like a lot of movement to get some reaction out of it. And let's see, we have no flaps, just a trim. And we have no airspeed indicator either. Probably because it can't go very fast. All right, let me check the RPMs. I wish the RPMs were on a... Uh, I wish I could just hit down to get to them. If I hit down twice on my hat, I get down here to the fuel selector. Like, I'm not going to need that very often so I wish I wish down would move it to this view or a closer view like you see in a lot of the planes you can kind of focus down more on the instruments more uh, not in this one hopefully they fix that it's one of the first things I do is like check the camera presets out to know if they're gonna be useful or not And how this is set up, I, it's like a very, uh, the camera position's in like a very fisheye kind of view, like where we're sitting. Like everything looks, uh, it looks like I'm using a GoPro camera. Like it's very fisheye, which I don't, I don't really like that. I like it to be more flat, I guess. Let me check my graphic settings too, because a lot of this stuff is looking pretty bad right now. Ultra high. Let me switch a couple things to ultra here. And 
me turn the terrain detail up. See, this kills my frames. All right, there's a lot of uh, a lot of left turning tendency right now. I'm gonna see if I pull the throttle back a bit. Okay, there we go. So it's not pulling left. It's not rolling left right now. If I trim it out, Let's see what our RPMs are at. Okay, around f the 4,000 mark. Yeah, so far I. Uh, I don't like it that much. <laughs> it's mostly because of the camera view, though. Like, I, I really don't like this default camera view. Everything, it just makes all the la the landscape just looks weird, right? Like, the world looks strange to me. So. I want to see the pretty things, but not, in, not with a fisheye view. This is, like, zoomed back even further. Yeah, this is the default view right here. See if we can land in one of these rivers. Are these little channels right here? So it's nice that it has pitch trim though. The other ultralight, the uh, Solo um, that Sobo made, uh, has no pitch trim. This one does, which is convenient. I mean, this thing has no autopilot, though, really? Come on. Where's the autopilot at? All right, let's just get down on one of these. Test the water landing capabilities. have to pick another one we don't have that much uh we don't have much water runway here uh-oh yeah it's pretty it's pretty touchy with the stall too you can't pitch up very much even at full power I mean, it makes sense. It's a tiny engine. The boat probably weighs a ton. So our rate of climb is very slow. It's really, uh, it's hard to get turning too. I feel like I'm going to like, normally when you're flying, you know, any of the other planes I've flown, if you put in this much input, like you're barrel rolling. And on this one, you get to that edge where it, man, I can't even, I can't even climb. I'm at full power right now. Uh-oh, we're going down. We're totally crashing. Rip. Oh, God. Wow, I couldn't even climb right there. That's crazy. Let me pick a different spot. Yeah, I couldn't even climb there. Full power, barely nosed up, barely nosed up, and it's just uh, stalling. Let me just pick a smaller island over here. I'm going to start on the runway this time. Arrow keys to move up in the sea. Oh yeah, let me try spacebar uh, when I'm back in the cockpit. We'll see if that's better. Yeah, that'll... I like this spacebar uh, shortcut. It'll like sit you up in the seat. Which is pretty nice. Oops, time of day, let me fix that. There we go. It is cool it has a parking brake though, that's... I didn't expect a parking brake. <laughs> Look how fast it takes off. Awesome.
Yeah, spacebar is it's just a, a really subtle difference, but I, it looks pretty good. And you see a lot, quite a bit more of the ground when you hit spacebar to sit up. Yeah, it's gonna take some getting used to turning this thing though, for sure. I, I, I have my stick almost all the way to the left and it's barely banking it over. But that could be like a, you know, a realistic, like characteristic of flying something like this with this giant bar in front of you. You have to pull the entire bar to the side to get it to bank. I do like that there's a GoPro on the end though. Probably comes with a GoPro. <laughs> I mean, it just kind of looks hilarious. Something like this would probably be the funnest thing ever to fly in real life. I mean, kind of terrifying, but you get comfortable with it. You can go anywhere you want. <laughs> make it out to these islands here. I'm not sure what this, uh, this like golf ball or tennis ball is. Is it the parking brake? No, that's not the parking brake. It's not the mixture or prop. I don't think it has either one of those. So what is that control? Is that the pitch trim? Let me zoom in while I use the pitch trim. Uh, nope, that's not the pitch trim. I was gonna go, oh, hey, Matt Merlin, what's up, man? Welcome back. Hey, Jared, I was gonna go for a VFR flight. I saw you streaming the things people come up with. <laughs> I don't know anything about ultralights like this. I mean, I'm I'm sure this is based off a real a real plane, a real ultralight. I just I booted it up. I booted the uh, sim up and it's going to work some more on some RNAV tutorials and uh I saw this in the marketplace <laughs> cuz the marketplace got updated today. Oh, it pulls the wheels up. Oh, that makes sense. That's probably why my performance sucks when I'm in the air. Duh. That would make sense that there's gear. Oh, it does. Nice. Oh, that, it's a good thing you said thanks, Adam. I was going to land in the water with the gear down. Oh, there we go. That's probably why I was stalling so much, too, is I had the, I had the wheels down the whole time. I don't know why I didn't think that the gear could come up in this. It seems like too advanced, but I guess it's kind of a requirement for an amphibious plane for the gear to come up. <laughs> I haven't flown the bird dog either, so I've only flown the icon and not, not for a really long time. This is great. Just two dudes enjoying the time together. I mean, how cool would it be to land, to just land this in real life? I don't know. It's probably like the most like alone in the world feeling when you like take this thing out to some random area like this and land. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, I just chose a random spot in the Bahamas. We're near Mike Yankee, Bravo, Charlie. I didn't uh, research anything. I just zoomed in, picked an airport in a small, small area down here. I was like, where's the water? Let me just pick something near the water. Bird dog, a lot of fun. I tried to water land and forgot the landing gear. <laughs> I almost just did. Uh, I would have forgotten the landing gear. Oh, hawk's nest? Oh, oh M-Y-C-H. I would look it up, but there's, there's no avionics in this thing, you know? 
It does have a uh, trim though, which is nice. Since I'm away from a populated area, let me put on the ultra preset here. I fly in like the Los Angeles area so much that I usually have my settings dialed down, but when you're out, um, when you're out in a less dense area like this, you can just you can definitely raise your settings. If you're not flying in New York or Chicago or LA or something like that. <laughs> yeah, no invisible hands. It is kind of weird how the pilot is completely invisible, right? Like you don't see your hands, you don't see your knees, or your thighs, like you know, on the seat. <laughs> yeah, I haven't I haven't tried that bird dog yet, but I have seen posts about it. Just people seem to love it. So this definitely pulls to the left just a lot in general. Look at this thing. Thanks. Oh, wow. Why not? <laughs> you want to fly it? Not right now. I have to fly it. <laughs> My girlfriend says she wants to. You can probably hear her, but she's about to go uh, do a lesson. But she's like, what is that? <laughs> it takes a lot of roll input to get it to bank over, though. They just released this. What? Can, I don't I don't know what I'm looking for. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, getting distracted. We have a dog guest here, and the dog just left a present next to my chair for me, which is great. Can you imagine island hopping? Go down and pet a tiger shark. <laughs> Dude, the water looks so good. It's crazy how the water I don't pay much attention to in most of the areas I fly in. It's usually just like, you know, the Pacific. Yeah, but the water in this area is so awesome. When am I going to start lessons? Either tomorrow or never. I'm not sure yet. This looks pretty calm. I'm at idle. Oh, I was almost at idle. Now I'm at idle. Wait, are we already in? What? I feel like I'm airborne still. We're in the water? Dude. I mean, there's probably also a switch somewhere to switch this to water rudder. So I have to find where that is. This is pretty cool. Yeah, there's no, uh, it didn't even feel like I touched down into the water, right? <laughs> Tomorrow. <laughs> Dad, what is that? Yeah, this thing is. This thing is just funny. Like, it looks like something out of Waterworld. All right, so let me try to find the switch to enable the. Oh wait, it's working now. Oh, okay, okay. And when I'm in, um, when I'm in the, uh, that makes sense. When I'm in the uh, camera here, none of the, none of my inputs do anything. Um, you can't control anything when you're in the drone camera. Um, but here in third person, you can see the yeah, the water rudder just works. I guess it's a water and air rudder at the same time. So there we go. And it's pretty sensitive too, so that's cool. Tomato plant, yeah. Okay, let's uh let's, let's boat around a little bit. This thing takes off so e so easily though. I'm not sure uh it might be difficult to keep it on the water. What's my closest field in real life? Uh, I'd have to Google it to figure out exactly, but because I live in LA, there's like 200 airports. 
within two miles, so. What did this cost? It was like nine, it was almost $10 US dollars. It was an impulse purchase. I thought it was hilarious when I saw the, <laughs> when I saw the um, image of the two guys sitting in this with grins on their face. I mean, they sold me. This could be one of those things I rarely ever fly again, but I mean, I had to try it out. I think so far, I mean, if you want the amphibious thing, then, uh, you know, if you, if you definitely want an amphibious thing, I don't know if it's worth getting the ultralight like this thing over something like the bird dog or just using the icon, but um, the, Aso the Asobo solo uh, the top rudder solo, that thing is only $10. Oh, no, it's only $5, actually. Um, and that thing is awesome. Lands it in a pool. Oh, that's a great idea. I actually wonder if there are any pools big enough that they actually generated water in them. Or they're only, uh, you know, just satellite photos. I'm actually hard ruddering to the right right now, and I can't turn. If the rudder, rudder is completely right, we're not... We're not going anywhere. How do you back it off if you beach it? Oh, we should beach it and find out. I bet you can hit shift P and a pushback guy will come out, push you away from the beach. <laughs> to take this thing to the 3W2. Wait, what's 3W2? Get your girlfriend to fly you there in real life. I'll have to look up 3W2. My goal is to some way, someday fly from Torrance and land at the airport. Land at the... Hold on, let me... I gotta close the door here. One sec. And land at... Sorry, land at the airport in the sky. Gonna start your PPL training sometime this year. Nice, Jared. Yeah, I have, I have never... Uh, I haven't even taken a Discovery flight, so I just... Uh, just riding on the coattails of my partner who's got her PPL and she's doing her instrument training right now. She's about to leave. Um, I think she has an 8 p.m. like a night lesson tonight um, for some IFR training. So she's doing that. Yeah, there's like a certain speed when I hit that I just can't. Um, I can't rudder at all. So the rudder is fully left right now. And... There's like a, it seems like there's like an ideal speed. What pro, I'm, I'm guessing what's happening is if I get too much speed, it's like trying to take off. Oh, Catalina's three is um okay, Catalina, three W two. We flew to Catalina a few times when I first got the sim. Um, that approach is awesome. Like the cliffs are right there when you touch down. It's pretty it's pretty cool. I'm not sure exactly which of the airfields we landed at. Is there? Is there only one on Catalina? I feel like there's a couple over there. Yeah, I'm holding <laughs> I'm holding left to rudder this whole time and I Okay. Yeah, there's like some ideal speed to be at. Yeah, it kind of wants to take off, right? So it's leaning instead of rotating. Can I like hold the brake to put my hands in the water to slow down? 3W2 is put in Bay Lake Erie. Oh, okay, okay. I can check that out next if it's uh, awesome. This is really cool though. I actually haven't seen the water at this high of detail before because I've only, I haven't flown in the Bahamas much and done amphibious stuff for a while and the water just looks incredible. Mexico vibes, but Ohio. <laughs> Sounds nice. And I really want to pull left, but I can't. Come on. Yeah, I was turning a little bit. Let me check that. Let me check the rudder. Oh yeah, it's not even, it's barely in the water. There must be a switch to put that down then. So there was the gear switch, which I obviously don't want to hit that. So there's the fuel on off. So I used that before. Oh, it's probably this. Um, do 
I have a hardware switch on that or something? Okay, that's not the parking brake. That must be the gear switch because it's forced up right now. Um, and then here... Oh, this must be it then. It must be this. Oh yeah, that's totally down now. All right, so this tennis ball looking control, so this little black switch right here is gear up down. This is the water rudder level. Okay, nice. Merlin to the rescue again. All right, now we can move. Maybe. Maybe not. <laughs> I think it's down more, right? Yeah, it's definitely down there way more than it was before. I'm full right rudder right now. So now I need more speed than I was giving it before. All right, there we go. Let's see. All right, yeah, now we're in business. I was worried about giving it too much power before, but now it's pretty good. Flew from Windsor to MILS in the Bahamas. Whoa, how many miles was that? What, Windsor? Isn't Windsor on the west coast? Isn't Windsor, is Windsor like north of Vancouver? I don't know Canada that well, but. That must have taken forever. What did you fly in? That sounds so cool. Yeah, I'm, yeah, Jared. I just don't. I'm just worried about giving it too much speed that I take off because the runway, the runway roll, like the takeoff roll, was so fast. It was up in like half a second. So I'm like, <laughs> I think I'm just gonna become airborne all of a sudden. Oh, it's near Detroit. Okay, okay. What's the uh, what's that famous like Canadian um, mountain range? Is it uh, what's it called? It's like north of uh, Vancouver. I'm confusing it with that one. All right, let's take off. Let me pull the rudder up. Let's get to another little island over here. Dude, that just comes up so fast. That's crazy. So funny that the wheels come. I don't know why I wasn't expecting the wheels to come up and down. I mean, obviously they have to, to land. Four hours left, Jason. I guess I need to be on for another four hours then, if I can entertain you for that long <laughs> or make you shake your head for that long. That's a bummer. Is it your internet speed slower? Are their servers having problems? We're doing it, brother. We're doing it. Oh, the internet's ridiculous. I wish you could, um, I saw some people on Reddit. They didn't confirm this, but they were trying to figure out a way to have it like turned on overnight so it would update. But the problem is you have to launch you know, you have to launch the sim to get the second part of the update, so. 1200 baud modem. And I remember upgrading mo modems back in the day and how excited I was to go from like a 1200 to a 2400 to a 96 to a 14.4. What a time. I loaded a whole photo in less than a minute. It's insane. 
what airports this one is oh looks like i'm close i'm coming up on mike yankee zulu 3. we started over here at mybc so myz3 is in front of us and i'm on the us west server with all players turned on even though i'm off the coast of florida or you know we're in the bahamas i uh i'm on the west server still showing my age Thankfully, I don't think that uh, there's too many extremely young people that like super interested in flight sim. I'd say I'd say most of us are more like 40 than 20 or 50 or 60 than 20. <laughs> but I definitely remember upgrading modems, <laughs> chasing the modem bods. It's great. I used BBSs back in the day pre-internet. It was great. Sixty-eight. Cheers, Jim. I mean, this is just, you know, simming is I think more of a mature thing. We're not playing uh, not playing first-person shooters as much. And actually wanting to learn about aviation, you know. Not necessarily a young kid's hobby, right? <laughs> and for all you guys that have probably flown for years, you know, it's totally different. Uh-oh, 3-0. Good luck. Good luck with the 3-0, devil. <laughs> This isn't the best area. I think I, I need to find a better area to fly in. Something with more mountains or something like that. Like, this is cool. The water looks great, but other than that, there's really not too much to look at here. Let me find another spot to go to. Or something that's. Do you guys know anything that's more mountainous near the water? Like something. Uh, I need to find something with some more terrain. Where, like, the. Uh, what's that area? Like the White Cliffs? Um. Of Dover, what's the nearest airport to that? That could be pretty cool. Let's see, nearest airport. I'm just Googling this really quickly. Croatia. Oh, Croatia is great. Dover. <laughs> Try Dover first. What's the closest? Is it Heathrow? There's got to be a smaller airport there, right? Um, let me paste in the coordinates here. I'll just put in the latitude, longitude. Yeah, it's right there. I'm just going to depart from there. There, I'm cheating. Bam, save us all some time. Alaska. <laughs> Actually, this is this is how I could. I haven't tested the icing fix yet. That's one way. We'll take the amphibious to Alaska. <laughs> See, you load in. It's just got ice hanging from the uh, from the wings. <laughs> just full on icicles. Oh, Papua New Guinea. Yep. I was catching up on some of uh, Ryan's videos, the missionary bush, bush pilot guys videos. I had a backlog of like. A dozen of them to catch up on. I always love watching that guy's videos. It's amazing. All right, starting airborne. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, God. All right, all right, everything's fine. Man, it just kind of went crazy as soon as it loaded in. Just make sure all the trim is neutral and stuff. It is. Okay. I had space bar to sit up a bit. All right, we're going to need to do some... Uh, need to do th some 360s here to get down. I saw that... Um, you know, that guy, Ryan, the missionary bush, bush pilot guy on YouTube has, um, I heard him talking about a bunch of uh, custom, like, I think he said he had someone remake the airfields, like the airstrips that he lands on there to make them more realistic and true to life. Um, just really cool. 
just the the level of customization that you can do. It's just I just think it's so cool that he can offer something like that to people that want to recreate those flights, like fly the same routes that he does, experience the same airports, put the same kind of uh, you know objects on the ground around the airports, the same houses, and fix all that. It's kind of awesome. I actually am curious now if we took this up to Alaska, what the uh, what effect the weather might have on this. If we, uh, I mean, it should be happy, right? I have no idea what to expect. All right, let's get over to the cliffs. I haven't even come here actually. I've seen a bunch of screenshots of the cliffs, but haven't actually flown here myself yet. Um, part of the sim update that got fixed what, um, was the icing effect, and I've been following it a bit on Reddit in the comment section, and people there were saying that uh, it does in fact melt off after you leave the uh, the like frost conditions, basically. So if you go through some precipitation, you know, vis visible moisture in, in clouds, and you get icing on, it can come off when you get out of it. Someone else commented that even if you're um, climbing and you climb through clouds and get icing, that I don't know if this is true. I, I guess it is. They said that in the airliners, um, there's so much wind passing over the wings that it generates heat, so it can actually melt the ice off just because you're going so fast in like a 747. Thanks for the tutorial on the G3000. Oh, and the 930, no problem. Flew from Miami executive to Bahamas, went flawlessly, bounced a bit on landing, crosswind of 19 knots. That sounds challenging. Dude, there they are. No problem, man. Glad I helped out. I'm working on some RNAV tutorials. Um, I'm probably gonna do a couple RNAV approaches after I'm done flying around in this thing. But um, I've just been brushing up a bit more on RNAV stuff myself before I make the tutorial, just to make sure I know what I'm talking about. But um, you know, there are so many RNAV procedures and so many more got added. It's crazy that they didn't really detail this in the release notes, but that um, that one line that said that they added uh, FAA data to their navigation database or something like that added a t I'm sure it added thousands of procedures like I, I can't I don't know exactly how many, but I wouldn't be surprised if there are hundreds or thousands of new procedures available. In Microsoft Flight Sim because I'll go through phases of installing and uninstalling Navigraph um, to add more procedures because I'll go try to find something or my girlfriend will want something want to fly something and the procedure she's looking for isn't in the default database so Navigraph is really useful for adding those um, but yeah they, they added a ton to this stock sim so without Navigraph you probably have access to a lot more things now NDB approach. I haven't even flown. Uh, I haven't flown an NDB approach yet. I understand how to do it in theory, um, but I haven't even flown one yet. I'll definitely add that to the list. I have to cover RNAV first, though, just because there are so many RNAV approaches. Um, and I'm going to start with the LPV approaches, the, the WAS enabled approaches. Or in the US, it's WAS, but. Um, yeah, there are just so many LPV approaches, which you fly similarly to how you fly an ILS. It basically gives you the same minimums, but for a GPS or WASP-based approach. So those are great, and um, supposedly there's twice as many LPV and LP approaches as ILS approaches in the US. So if Microsoft and Asobo did add a ton more RNAV approaches, then We'll have access to all of those, or you know, a lot more of those now. Oh, NDB is still big up in Canada. Good to know. That's cool. Yeah, I, I, I've used the, uh, I've used the ADF a bit to play around with it, and like just check out the instrument, see how it works. Um, it's pretty straightforward. I don't know how straightforward it is using it for an approach, but I'll check it out. I remember hunting on the VFR sectionals in the U.S. for like. 10, 20 minutes until I found an actual NDB on it. <laughs> so, 
It took me a while to even find one. This thing is just so silly. It just like, it's kind of cracking me up. Oh, Grand Canyon on the river. That's a good idea. All right. Yeah, that sounds good. This is more for the for the cliffs than the water at this spot. I should just I should just land on the road right there. Yeah, we need to get somewhere more scenic with water. It gets going pretty fast when you uh, when you punch the throttle, though. It's not too bad. Take her to three W two. All right, we can do three W two and then the Grand Canyon. That'll probably be enough time, enough time in this thing. And then uh, I do want to do like a couple, couple RNAV flights, RNAV approaches. Check out some LPV magic. Niagara Falls, go down the waterfall. <laughs> Oh yeah, what happens? I mean, I just, yeah, that, <laughs> I mean, I assume that it'll just go to a black screen because of the G-force of the landing, you know, the quote unquote landing into the water below will just be way too high. Cancel 3W2. <laughs> go over the falls. <laughs> Oh, this road looked fine before. Now it's just kind of sad looking. I turned off photo grammar tree or whatever. I don't. I don't think it, there's any here. But man, I really noticed that it just started looking really bad in the LA area. Um, so I turned it off, and I, I think it's a performance hit too. So, all right, let's try. Uh, <laughs> let's try Niagara Falls. <laughs> <laughs> you fly a Cessna, everyone's like, ah, can we see an ILS approach? Can we, uh, you know, can we try the uh, programming the GPS flight plan? You pull out the ultralight, it's like, hey, can we uh, launch this thing? <laughs> where, where can we launch this thing? <laughs> to New York we go. Not, Not via, oh my God. I did not type that out of habit. Why can't I, why can't I find the Niagara Falls? I'm an American. I don't know where to look. I don't know where anything is. There we go. I do know where it is. Or I just got extremely lucky. <laughs> All right. Oh, if I set it as arrival, okay, seven minutes. I'll take off from the airport. It's cloudy. All right, it's cool. We can we can fly this in IMC. It'll be okay. Uh, I did put the wheels down. Yeah, for that for that road landing. All right. Oh, I can switch it tonight too. If I can see anything. I was just so surprised to, to open up the marketplace thread on the forums and see this, so. <laughs> so it's just so silly. Oh, they light them up in real life. 
I haven't even, I don't think I've ever been to the Niagara Falls before. Mm-hmm. I can tell I haven't flown in this area either. I think it just takes uh, the first time you load up into a new area, it seems to take a lot longer, which makes sense. Like nothing is cached at all. Uh, something else I noticed on Reddit tonight is um, I guess there's uh, coming soon from the Just Flight guys is going to be another Aero, but it's a Aero 4 Turbo. I'm just uh, waiting on a non complex Piper to come out. Now I want like a Warrior or an Archer or something like that. Oh yeah, all of Ontario and New York in one go. All right, all right, are we in? All right, Niagara Falls International. <laughs> sure we got clearance for takeoff. Permission for takeoff. Blown a Piper Warrior in real life. It's really fun to fly and to train in. Yeah, my my girlfriend's been training in an Archer. Um, mostly an Archer. It's a little choppy while it's loading everything in. I have it at ultra still. Hopefully the performance will be okay. You got your license in a Piper Tomahawk. Tromahawk? Saunahawk? <laughs> Piper Tri-Pacer. I'm going to have to Google all of those. I think I've heard of the... I think I've seen the phrase Tromahawk before. Okay, what direction am I going? I need to go west. But oh yeah, we do have a heading indicator in this. This is the heading indicator. Um, the plane within the middle of the heading indicator moves. So the actual numbers, you know, the cardinal directions and the numbers, the back plate part doesn't move at all. It's just the plane that moves. Piper Spore Cruiser. I've been seeing, I've been watching quite a bit of channels like I've just been stumbling on just other recommended YouTube channels um, of pilots and a lot of the ones I've been getting recommended lately are uh, Piper pilots, which is cool. I feel like a lot of the ones I watch, they're, they're just like always in a Cessna, but I really like watching the Piper stuff too. I feel like if I'm going to be a passenger in a Piper most of the time, it's what I want to be most familiar with. Even just uh, hopefully as a semi useful passenger. They can like look up a frequency or something. Look up, look up an ATIS frequency for the PIC, you know. And this thing is so hard to turn. Uh, I'm almost fully left on the stick right now to bank it, and this is what we're getting. It's uh, it takes a lot of pressure. You know, it said it would take seven minutes to get over there, but... Not sure if that's accurate or not. 
Why are you flying a lifeboat? Because <laughs> somebody made it. Oh man, at the end of the last stream, uh, I did end up downloading the H-135, the chopper. I spent a good, I was I was up way too late in the night flying that. I think I was up to like almost 2 a.m. Uh, flying the Airbus H-135. I heard that the patch broke it, and I, I don't know if it's been updated um, since the patch came out. But, um, man, that, that thing is so challenging and fun to fly at the same time. I understand why it's so popular. And I was like, ah, am I really interested in helicopters, whatever? And as soon as I downloaded it, I was like, challenge accepted. Let's figure out how to fly this thing. It was really, really fun. I did a bunch of Neo fly missions in it, doing um, the VIP ones. It's really cool. Coast Guard prototype boat. Yeah, this is it. Fear. Oh, 1.0 came out today. The H135. Does that mean it's compatible with the uh, with the sim update four that just came out then, Jim? If so, I'm gonna have to update it tonight and get back to practicing. It's so much fun to fly. It's it's so difficult. I could like barely land it on a runway or you know at the end of a runway. Yes and yes, awesome. Thanks, man. Good to know. Uh, yeah. I've I barely put like eight hours into practicing on that. I feel like I need like 80 more hours to get okay at it. It's really, really challenging. I probably shouldn't have put it in advanced mode for my first flight, but I didn't want to learn unrealistic things. Like I wanted it to be difficult. But man, it's so fun, especially if you use Neofly, the... Um, the missions are so fun in that, like the search and rescue missions. I was doing it in the Seattle area when I was doing it. So I was doing like, a, you know, an emergency mission at a crash on the I-5 near Seattle. And then then flying to the like the southwest near. Um, oh, what city was it near? Probably forget the name, but uh, doing like a search and rescue in like this heavily wooded area over there and listening to the Morse code beeps. It was just really, really fun. So I'm glad they updated it that fast. That's great. Helicopters don't fly. They beat the air into submission. <laughs> All right, we're coming up. I should have probably loaded straight into the falls, but we're almost there. I'll be there in a couple minutes. It would be really cool if... I, I know that Microsoft has their own... Oh, see you later. Have fun. I know that uh, Microsoft, they said they have plans for helicopters, right? But not until like 2022 or something like that or later. I just wish there was a way to make multiplayer a little more realistic where if someone's in a helicopter, I, I wish they would just have like a base generic for a helicopter. Just so when people in multiplayer are flying one, you don't see like a floating bonanza hovering over the airfield. Um, that would be pretty cool. I know everyone could just install it, but you know it would be it would be cool if they uh, had something that just worked for everyone, regardless of having a third party one installed. You know, five feet off the water, nose dives, nose dive over the edge. Oh, more right rudder. Yeah, she know she knows she's she's teaching me more right rudder. <laughs> she just left uh, just now. Have you heard her say bye for her? Uh, for her next instrument lesson. Yeah, it's pretty cool. She um, she's used the sim here and there, but what's really nice about Microsoft Flight Sim is that is the visual references. So she'll do a little research on a route she's gonna fly. So like, I don't know if she's gonna do it this weekend because the weather might not be good, but she was gonna uh, take a route, a new route and um, she just flew the route in the sim just to pick out visual landmarks and stuff like freeways and things like that. And you know, Microsoft Flight Sim is pretty amazing for that. I know a lot of people still say, you know, X Plane's like the way to go for IFR stuff, which makes sense because there's just more capability. But for VFR stuff and like finding references like that, it's pretty unbeatable. No, it's really cool.
helicopter flying formation with a 777. <laughs> I think um, a couple weeks ago, I, I think it was on a Friday, the official Microsoft Flight Sim um, team, they have that Twitch channel that they do, you know, a couple streams a week, and they were doing a community fly-in. It was during my lunch hour, and so I took a break and flew for like 30 minutes with them in the ultralight when it came out, the uh, top rudder one. And uh, one of the guys was just floating around the airfield, who's <laughs> clearly in the in the H-135, but I didn't have it installed at the time. So I just saw like a Bonanza or whatever. I think it was like the G is it the G-36? I forget what the default is, but I think it's one of the Bonanzas. <laughs> he was just floating around this uh, little untowered field that we had all met at. Um, it was it was just hilarious. <laughs> All right, let's uh, do a flyby real quick. See what we're getting ourselves into. Yeah, this isn't gonna, this is going to work out just fine. <laughs> I, I am I am really curious though that like which which parts down here can you land it? I mean, this is not even rendered as water, right? Like this is just solid right here. This has water rendered in, but down here, I don't... Uh, maybe it does a little bit right there. Just have to look for the shiny parts, right? Outside over the airplane view, so you can see the ground. Oh, done any piloted... Oh, pi uh, pilot... Do you mean pilot edge? Oh, using only a sectional? I have not only used a sectional. Um, I tend to like kind of always use the Garmin's. I use the G1000 a lot. All right, let's see. So we're going to land here and just drive it off the edge. Yeah, the, it does look a little cheesy. <laughs> like how it's just solid like that, right? The water around it looks great, but... You know what, let me turn on, you know what, it, well, it's not going to change the water, but if, if there's photogrammetry data here, I had turned that off um, here. So let me turn that back on and see if that does anything. Not sure what areas it's in, but I turned that off because when I was flying around LA, the buildings look so bad. They look like they're all under construction or half destroyed. Like, it's really weird how they look. They look better when they're just like the standard, just like polygons, so that like are all one color. Um, so I had turned off photogrammetry because it, yeah, it just looked really bad. Pilotage is where you fly using ground landmarks. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. Not really, I don't really do that much other than like the couple bush trip missions that are built in, like those challenges built into Flight Sim. Done a couple of those, um, but you know, those have, um, you know, they have like written descriptions and stuff too. But I definitely gravitate more towards the Tech, the techie side, like using all the avionics, using the autopilot. Um, if I ever did a discovery flight and went for like one lesson after that, I would just be like, wait, I have to hold the yoke? What? All right, did that change anything? I think that improved it a, a little bit. Photogrammetry only affects buildings though, I think, right? Not... Um, I don't think it affects the terrain at all. I think it's just more building information. Should probably go check out the bridge over here first before I likely kill us going off the edge.
Yeah, I can't tell if the water looks better. The white blob. Oh, yeah, yeah, it is gone, right? Yeah, from right, right in that area. There's something about the, the photo data in LA that's just really bad, though. <laughs> With pilotage flights, you really get to see how good they did with rendering the world. Yeah, like that's the that's the benefit of Microsoft Flight Sim. I'm not taking advantage of is yeah, all the visual stuff. You know, I yeah, I just tend to focus on all the instrument stuff, and then I could be playing any sim using the instrument stuff. I mean, the clouds though. I mean, the clouds look incredible. I wonder if there's an invisible wall under that bridge or not, if I try to fly through it on the way back. You can hit up the casino down there if you have time. And cash. Water park? Oh, there's the casino. Oh, that tower right there. It's like a mini Vegas right here. Yeah, the bridge looks good too. I definitely spent time working on that bridge. The car is actually driving over it. Good job, Asobo. All right, so I'm going to land and then <laughs> and then we're going to we're going to putt over to the edge and make sure that gravity works in Microsoft Flight Simulator. <laughs> Scenery update with lights and a zip line. That sounds awesome. I'm trying to think the only scenery packs I got. I got, um, I think I got Seattle, Chicago, and Vegas. I remember in one of the streams I grabbed Vegas and Vegas looked awesome. Low key, want the world map when you zoom in, it would be an actual VFR map. Yeah, yeah, like um, the sectionals are an X-plane, right? When you bring up the uh, when you bring up the map, you actually get like a VFR sectional. Um, I've been using a little bit of Navigraph charts. I know some people have been using that for a while. Um, I was using ForeFlight just because, you know, I have it on my iPad just because the few times I've been a passenger, it's been really nice to have just to track where we are and, you know, look at look at the traffic on the map and try to try to look out for traffic and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I think I prefer to have it on my on the tablet just because, you know, when I'm full screen in the sim and stuff like that. I don't want to have to tab out or anything, but playing windowed and having Navigraph charts on the side is pretty nice. You know, it's got the moving map, you get all the Jeppesen charts. Uh, so that's kind of great. You know, the Jeppesen stuff's included with Navigraph, whereas with like four flight, it's like a good, um, whoops, I just put the gear down because I'm smart. Didn't get all the way down, so we're good. All right, gears up. Um, yeah, it's not, I don't know, there are a lot of options, you know. I think Navigraph is, you know, the best value, obviously, like, it's a really good value. Especially if you want all the Jeppesen charts and you fly out, you want charts for something outside of the U.S. I don't know if there's a max speed to uh, putting the rudder all the way down in the water. Alright, seems okay now. All right, let's make our way to the edge. <laughs> this is such a horrible idea. I mean, a uh, great idea. It's a great idea. Clip this and post it separately. <laughs> I 
having a hard time uh having a hard time turning left again the rudder is extended down into the water Need, trying to give it enough throttle it just doesn't all right there we go a little bit uh oh <laughs> uh okay we're still whoa what's going on there all right oh what oh man what's your takeoff speed i have no idea because there's no uh <laughs> maybe i should all right i'm gonna restart it right at the falls but uh i think i might just have to turn off crash damage i think it like hit some random ground basically within the water because it just suddenly was tilting left super hard. Let me try that again and I'll turn off. Uh, turn off fall damage here so we can experience it. Crash damage disabled. All right, let's try this again. Crashed on a big fish. <laughs> Yep, sounds about right. And yeah, it was weird. It, it didn't want me to turn at first either. So maybe there's something weird there. I'm just, uh, yeah, I'm curious to see if we can even take it to the edge there in the water. All right, it's probably going to freak out as soon as I hit ready to fly, so I'm going to get ready to try to correct for that. Oh, not good. Not good. Not good. Why does it do that? <laughs> All right, we're back. All right, it just kind of freaks out a bit. I don't really ever load airborne, but definitely uh, it's not the smoothest thing when you load in already airborne. All right, gear is up. Let me just make sure. The dude on the back, yeah, he weighs three bills. Poor guy, he's still our friend. I don't know, man. It's just so silly looking. <laughs> now I'm not, I'm not sure if we have the uh, if we have the gear. At what point we might need the gear down or up? Like I'm not sure which parts are water or not. See how there's like this strip right here. This might be where it transitions to. No, it's still a little wavy right there. So maybe we do have some water. is gonna be epic don't get your hopes up it might be just a dud <laughs> yeah i'm just looking for what's shiny right like i can tell where there's water water but where is there fake water that resulted in our our crash yeah like all of that right there i'm not sure if that's considered water
don't sink. <laughs> we can never sink. Yeah, this is the one scenario we actually might sink. <laughs> Truer words have never been spoken. I see what you did there. Uh, I don't know what this is we're running up to right now, but it looks like land. It's like a weird hybrid between land and water and a hill. All right, damage is off, so whatever happens, we'll be able to see. <laughs> oh, this is land right here. Just kind of... Hmm. <laughs> All right, gear. Come on, gear. Can't put the gear down. Uh oh. We get a pushback. Oh. Oh, we're kind of getting a pushback. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, this is embarrassing. Just wiggling the rudder. It's kind of moving us. Come on. Come on, baby. Oh no. <laughs> I can rock it. <laughs> oh no. Oh, the tennis ball. Oh, is that is that stopping the gear? I mean, I wouldn't expect the gear to be able to come up while we're on the ground already. I think it's not going to let us do it since we're since we're beached. Yeah, the gear doesn't want to come down. Which makes sense. Oh my god, pushback works. Wait, I hit shift P and it's actually pushing us back. <laughs> All right. Sweet. Thank you. Thank you very much, ground crew. <laughs> I didn't think that would work, actually. All right. Pushback ended. Perfect. Let's try to get around this. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Come on. <laughs> I'm noticing that when I write, so if you see the pedals, I'm right ruddering and then they'll suddenly disconnect. <laughs> oh yeah, in a water with a gear down. Yeah, and then go straight forward again. Uh, it's not going to let me put the gear down in the water either though, right? I just need to get pushed back further. It, I don't know what's what's up with the steering. It's, it's harder than I expected to be. Like... What's weird is, I don't know if you see the rudder pedals. Oh, I know what the problem is. Oh my God. I have the, um, so my, my side stick has been, the rudder has been on the fritz. The side stick is like brand new and the rudder is already freaking out. Um, yeah, see how it's, I'm, I'm not, um, I actually have the rudder axis locked and it'll do this when I'm touching the stick. So I need to unbind this. That's what's causing these problems. And that's probably why I haven't been able to rudder in this at all tonight. So now the pedals are actually still pushed in to the right. Oh no, dude, I can't get out of here. Oh my God. <laughs> why is this so difficult? <laughs> Get a run at it. Yeah, maybe that wasn't the rudder problem, but it's pretty hard to uh, to turn this thing. I have the tennis ball pulled towards me. All right, maybe we're actually considered. It's actually considering us in the water now. Maybe. Come on. Yeah, the foot pedals were shaking. Yeah. Should have remembered that I had the axis on the stick as well. It's full right rudder. Come on. Oh my God. Oh no. <laughs> now I can't control the pushback. I'm just screwed. Guys, this is a big fail.
Okay, that's helping, right? <laughs> as long as we turn enough so the pushback gets us back in the water. Come on, baby. All right, pushback, invisible pushback attendant. Dude, please help. All right, pushback, please. Okay, it's the slowest pushback, but it's working. I, I didn't realize you could just hit shift P anywhere and it'll, it'll give you pushback no matter where you are. We're moving now. All right, everyone take a 20 minute break, come back, we'll be in the water. You just see a cloud of smoke come out from their mouths. They know this is gonna take a while. They light it up. have multiplayer on and no one's here right now doing this so this could still be a world first oh I can do a little recon so is this isn't actually considered water right yeah this just is gonna be considered the ground and then down here this is also considered the ground it looks like right here I don't know how that's considered the ground. I guess this waterfall is just, you know, it's not a thing. And then the water starts again. So there's no way we could do this with damage turned on. It's just going to end it as soon as we get to the bottom there. It is, it is kind of funny looking. In the meantime... We're almost there. <laughs> okay, we're in the water. So let it push us back further. I don't I don't know. I I'm probably doing something wrong. I mean I'm just like full right ruddering or left ruddering. And we have the, uh, we have it down, so had the prop down or the rudder down in the water. Oh my God, no, let me out. I'm, I'm full left rudder right now. Nothing is happening. No. I'm, I'm pulling back on the yoke. This is horrible. This is so bad. I can't I can't get out of this. I can't turn it. I can turn it better on when I'm beached than I can when I'm in the water. <laughs> this is so frustrating. Yeah, the rudder the rudder was down. I just pulled it back up. Cause we were about to hit the land, and so I was gonna try to take off, but Come on, get in there. <laughs> this is just, this is the worst. I just, I don't know what to, I don't know what I can do. Um, I'm just gonna do this. <laughs> Garbage product. Watching web page dry, <laughs> dry is more interesting. I don't, I don't know if I'm doing something wrong. The rudder was down in the water. I had, I was full left or full right. All right, I should have done this earlier. I don't think we're gonna get that experience we're hoping for, where we like. Uh, 
We see the splashes of water as we go over the edge. And there's a crowd cheering us on. You know? Popping champagne and dousing us with it as we go over the edge. I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, gear is up. But I think, <laughs> I actually don't know what's better because we're gonna land in the water, but then this area is gonna be considered ground and not water. So we're just gonna get stuck there again if the gear is up, right? So should I put the gear down? I should probably have the gear down. Cause I don't think we're gonna make it over the edge with the gear up, we're just gonna get beached again. Unless we have enough momentum. I mean, if I get enough momentum, I guess I should have the rudder up for now. If I get enough momentum going through here, then, you know, we should just, uh, we should just slide over the edge. Okay, we are idle. We're in the water. Full power, full send, and hope we slip off the edge. No, 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 don't fly. Okay, I got the, I got the yoke forward. Uh-oh, there's a lot of rocks. Uh-oh, there's a lot of rocks. There's a ton of rocks. <laughs> We're flying. We're flying. Oh, it doesn't count. We're flying. No. <laughs> this boat has wings. Who put wings on this boat? <laughs> I think we should try this bridge. There's another little set of falls after this bridge, right? <laughs> that was so anticlimactic. <laughs> hey, we went over the edge. We have wings. <laughs> now we're flying. I'm going to push forward on the yoke. <laughs> this is not the extreme sport we thought it was. All right, this is pretty good speed. Oh, someone else is here. Someone else is here in front of us. All right, now we're entering speedboat territory. So silly. <laughs> FAA agents entered the chat. It's a simulator, okay? It's a simulator. Oh no! Oh, too much speed. We have a little porpoising or something. Uh oh. I have to nose down a little or it's gonna take off really easily. But the gear is moving. The gear was just moving on its own. <laughs> oh, we're up again, aren't we? No! <laughs> I can't stop taking off. I want the water speed. If I if I if I nose down too much, you know, the front just goes into the water. This is really pretty right here, though. I mean, this looks way better than it does right near the actual uh, falls. Looks really good. <laughs> it's 
just it's just so silly looking. <laughs> Wonder how the registration works. Is it registered as a boat or a plane? So the other ultralight, do you even, I don't think you even need a pilot's license to fly an ultralight. I don't know if it needs a registration or not. I mean, I assume if a drone needs a registration, right? Then a, and something like an ultralight would as well. I, don't know, I think I saw people um, when that plane came out. I was in the Microsoft chat. I think I saw people saying that you don't even actually, you don't need a license or anything to fly one of those. You just like buy it and go with the top rudder ultralight. Whoa! <laughs> we're good we're good you don't even need a medical that's crazy okay it's okay we can take off inverted this will work I mean there there is there is something fun about uh flying without fall damage on and uh or aircraft damage on I'm not sure if we can get out of this either all right push back uh, push back, please. <laughs> Upside down, no crash. Kiss the water before and you died. Oh, I turned I turned off the uh, damage. That's why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wings with a boat, not a boat with wings. <laughs> I think you got, I'm trying to take off. It's not working. I think you got it upside down, Jim. All right, I don't, I don't think I can get out of this one. Uh, all right, first hydrofoil. What was the other, uh, we wanted to go to Alaska or something. I think I'll do, could do a little bit in Alaska, find some cool lakes or something, and then uh, I want to try a couple missions. Do maybe a couple Sky Park missions and find some RNAV approaches or something like that. Um, I should download the helicopter. I, I kind of wanted to do um, some helicopter missions, which are super fun. I'm quite the noob, though. Oh, Mojo Risen, that's who is near us. What up, Mojo? Um, and then let's see. Yeah, let's go somewhere in Alaska. This is probably a horrible idea. I oh, like right over here. This looks cool. <laughs> this is this is such a bad idea. All right, Adam, take it easy. Up for work at four. All right, man, have a good night. Thanks for hanging out, man. All right, I have it on live weather. Yeah, let's turn on snow. Good idea. <laughs> this is just gonna drop like a rock, probably. I'm actually curious to see like what the icing effect on this looks like. This is just fine. This is a great idea. Oh, the gear. Oh, okay. I, I had it up on the uh, on the uh, throttle quadrant. That's why it came up came up automatically. All right. This is just a great idea.
Yeah, the camera angle is like my main complaint. Well, the rudder, the rudder pedals don't seem to do anything in the water most of the time, but it could just be my incompetence in flying a, flying a seaplane. But um, I feel like most of the time it wasn't really doing much in the water. Like really hard to, uh, to get it to turn. It's probably an ideal speed to be at, and I was either too hot, too fast, or too slow. Does this take on does this take on icing or not? Yeah, it looks like there is on the leading edge there, right? Um it's hard to tell. Can't tell if that's icing on top of her or I think it is. Or if that's just how uh how the livery is. All right, Devi, see you, man. Devi or Devil. Sorry if I'm saying it wrong. Thanks for hanging out, too. Pattern work in a Cherokee. Get your time in. Awesome. I will be uh, I will be working on those RNAV tutorials. It's a three-day weekend, so that's great. So I'll have some extra time to work on those. Um, yeah, I hope that's helpful for you guys. You're probably, uh, you probably know the ins and outs of RNAV as well, but... I have the ILS, so I should do all the other approach types as well, and someday get to the NDBs and the DME arcs, uh, VORs with the DME arc, all those kind of things. There's just so many. I definitely like this better in the tropical areas. This feels like, uh, this just feels so sketchy. <laughs> I just need to know the best places to go, you know? I'm not really sure where the best areas are, but the Bahamas are definitely just awesome. I'm gonna land here and test out the rudder again. Like, I don't know if it's just me or if there's something functionally wrong. Um, with getting it to turn. I wonder if there are any, uh, I haven't like looked at all the third party, you know, like the free um, planes and aircraft that people have made. I don't know if there are any silly ones. Like this is just, this one's just ridiculous and kind of funny to fly around. I don't know if there's anything like just like wacky stuff that people have made, you know, out there in the community. I know that someone put out that cardboard one, right? Uh, there was like the cardboard plane uh, for April Fools. That was really funny, but I don't know if there's a, a, been any anything else that's like silly like that. Good night, Jim. Yeah, take care, man. Thanks for hanging out. All right, let's try this rudder again. Rudder is down. Yeah, I think I just really I need to keep this speed pretty slow. It looks like. A flying donut? <laughs> It'd be fun to just uh, get a bunch of those and make a compilation of, and, you know, link to all the silly uh, aircraft people have made. That sounds hilarious. I mean, you know, this one's meant to be, you know, serious, but I, I think it's kind of silly at the same time. Like, it's the fun balance, you know. It is based on, like, a real, a real plane, right? A real ultralight, but... At the same time, it's like really funny. <laughs> they just need uh, some fishing poles on the side. I 
I haven't flown the Icon in a long time either, so I think after I'm gonna have to test the bird dog as well at some point and fly that around. I had such a good time and uh, with the two ultralights, like the, the top rudder one and this one, I think I like the top rudder one better. I mean, this one will obviously get you more places, but there's, yeah, just the, there's just like the camera angles and stuff have me, I wish they were, it was just a little closer. Maybe they'll update them after a bit, but I'm not even looking at the instruments either. Like I, you just have RPMs, a heading indicator and fuel. And then I think this is the, I haven't seen it because I've been using the throttle quadrant, but this is the gear switch right here. Gear up and down, or the wheels up and down, you know, and then the rudder in and out of the water. And then right behind us right here is fuel on and off. It's pretty cool. Couple of bros in a boat. Plane. Boat plane. Alright, I think I'm gonna switch over to doing some a few sky park missions. Do a couple Arnav approaches. Earn a couple bucks in Sky Park. I'm just loading up some Sky Park here. And they already released another update. No, not in this. I'm gonna switch to something else. I figured this would this would be fun for an hour or so and then probably get a little bit boring. Um, so I thought I'd do some missions as well. Unless you guys want me to go to some other areas in this. I'm totally down for that. I just figured it might get a little old a little fast. Uh, Sky Park did make another update. Um, what was the update? Um, they added another section. Okay, yeah, so on Wednesday, this was right after the patch came out on Tuesday. So the next day, um, they updated the airport database because that flight sim update had a bunch of new procedures added. Um, and in, in my quick summary of the update, I noticed like I had just happened to be near uh looking at santa monica airport the like night before and um you know I, I wish they would give us some stats on maybe how many new approaches were added but i was talking with someone on reddit and santa monica didn't have any uh approaches at all in the database and so when i loaded the when i loaded the sim up i just zoomed right back into santa monica and uh switched to ifr and then noticed that all of a sudden they have all these approaches. So the, the guy on Reddit was uh, practicing the RNAV 2.1 and that's an LPV approach. So that's uh, basically like a flavor, if you will, of an RNAV approach. There's several different types of RNAV approaches and the LPV type of RNAV approach is one that closest resembles an ILS. It's basically the ILS equivalent of an RNAV approach. So you get the lateral and vertical guidance. Anyway, he was trying to fly that and, you know, I was like, oh, sorry, man, I took a look and there are no procedures. So that's why it's not working. Like you can't even choose that. Uh, but now you can. It's there. And I only looked at one airport uh, to see if there were new procedures there and they were there. So I'm sure if uh, I had a one out of one that I checked had it, there's probably a ton of other ones that also have missing procedures now added. Um, so I guess the uh, Sky Park updated their database, it sounds like, to take advantage of all of those. So I'm guessing they just use that to generate, you know, even more missions. 
And then they also added, um, they also added this, I think, is this in, uh, I think this is in India, Sanjay National Park. And they added a bunch of new missions here in India. So they do this on a regular basis. They'll add this hashtag mission um, set of missions to uh, bring you to some cool scenic place in the world to do missions in. I don't like that song, skipping it. Uh, so over here, we, yeah, if we go into India, then we can find that set of missions there. Sanjay National National Park Run. So you just deliver supplies for safari companies. And it looks like, yeah, it's for a light piston engine aircraft is recommended. So I could do one of these to start just to check it out because it's new, but I do want to pick ones that have uh, RNAV approaches. So let's see, this is 94 nautical miles. So I'm gonna look up, I'm gonna look up that airport code, Victor Alpha 1 Oscar, Alpha 1 Oscar. I think to see what approaches are available. So there, there's no approach available there. So I just need to limit these by which ones have the uh, RNAV approaches. So I can look through some of those in Navigraph and um, What's cool about Navigraph too is that it has a moving map like you would get on ForeFlight or something like that. So what I can do is put that on the uh, side of the stream and you can actually see the, you know, overlaid um, our position overlaid on top of the approach uh, plate, the approach document. And it has all the Jeppesen documents instead of the, um, the FAA ones. Of course, when we're outside of the US, that's, you know, we can't use the FAA ones, but um, let me check another one here. Just scrolling through these missions um, and figuring out which one has an RNAV approach. So that's the same. Do they all go to the same airport? No, they don't. VA1 Fox. And I'm not even sure how many of the published approaches in India are in the database. Like, I have no idea. So let's check a few. And if it seems like there aren't any, I'll have to go back to the US or something like that. B O H K. Yeah, there's no approaches here either. All right, I'm going to try one more. Uh, no approaches there either. All right. So I don't know if there just aren't. I mean, I know RNAV approaches are really popular, like in the US, in Europe. Um, I'm pretty sure India has its own WAS equivalent, um, just like Europe does. In the US, it's called WAS, um, but I know Europe has its own, Japan has its own, um, I think China has one they're working on, and I think India also has their own version of WAS, which is basically, you know, beefed up GPS with more accuracy, more precision, more availability. It's possible there aren't that many approaches in India yet, I just, I don't know about it. I haven't found one in those checks we just did so let's just move back to the US where there's more likely we're more likely going to be able to find one and you can see my pilot's still in the northwest here so we are up right on the border between Oregon and Washington so I can find a, um, a job anywhere here I'm trying to think what I want to fly tonight I've been flying the Diamond DA40 quite a bit I feel like if we're going to be doing RNAV and doing published approaches, we probably want to fly something a bit faster. So we could go with like the TBM. I've flown the TBM quite a bit compared to like the business jets. I haven't really flown the Citation all that much. And tonight I'm going to remove the N from my tail number so I don't have to hear air traffic control say November over and over and over again, which uh, which is my biggest pet peeve of the ATC stuff. All right, so let's uh, check out some of these then. So I'm going to filter for turboprops. So it'll give us a good uh, good runway lengths that are suitable for turboprops. 
And then we can also require runway lighting just as a way to limit the types of airports uh, that we're landing at to ones that more, more likely have, are going to have an RNAV approach. And I don't really want anything over... Let's see, I can put in a distance here, so how far I want to fly. I don't know, even 100 miles in the turboprop is... I think that's enough. Enough of a limit. So this is 98 miles. Sunrise Sky Park ID 40 to KBNO Burns Municipal. So let's check ID 40 to, I'm just putting this on the sim, KBNO November, Kilo Bravo November, Oscar Burns Municipal. And we do have an RNAV there. But the question is what type of RNAV approach is it? Because basically, if you think about, um, for you guys who haven't, like, flown RNAV approaches, there are different kind of variations of RNAV approaches that have different capabilities and different minimums, kind of like how a localizer approach or a VOR approach has a different set of minimums than an ILS. So we have those same types of differences with RNAV approaches. So what I'm going to do is hop over to Navigraph. All right, so here is Navigraph. And what I can do is just type in our destination. I can just do a quick search up here for KBNO. And I hit this map button and that'll take us to all the procedures, all the documentation they have for it. So there's even things like the taxi diagram, airport diagram. Uh, there are no SIDs or STARS, but we can see here we have RNAV GPS runway 30. And it is not, so this is an example of an RNAV approach that um, there is no LPV approach available. So down here at the bottom where the minimums are, you can see the types, um, the different types of approaches we have. So we have a circling approach and then we have just an LNAV. So LNAV is just lateral navigation. So it's basically similar to a localizer. Uh, act, uh, it's not quite similar to localizer. I guess it's more like, um, it's almost more like a VOR or something. Like a localizer is very precise compared uh, for approach, but an LNAV is basically a less precise lateral approach than a localizer. But there is a localizer-like approach called an LP approach. So there's LPV, which is localizer position with vertical guidance. So that's basically an ILS. Then there's LP, which is also a WAS enabled approach. That's just lateral. And then the non WAS enabled ones. So like this LNAV approach, you could do, I think with a non WAS Garmin unit or other avionics. So, um, and it's less precise. So the minimums are higher. Um, I, these do work. LNAVs work in Microsoft Flight Sim. The ones that don't work are anything with VNAV as far as programming a VNAV profile um, into the avionics and Microsoft Flight Sim. There's basically no support for VNAV um, and those uh, those VNAV um, guidance, vertical guidance for, with VNAV. So if you find one that has an LPV approach, you can fly that every time. It just works just like an ILS does. So what I want to do is pick another airport it's a little cumbersome to go back and forth and like, you know, I wish I can't filter by, uh, you know, approach type that I want an RNAV LPV approach specifically. Um, so I have to like look around until I find one. But thankfully, uh, it's as easy as um, just looking up the airport in Navigraph. So I can just go back and forth between those two. And, you know, if you pick a more major airport, it's more likely going to have RNAV approaches, and if it does have RNAV approaches, it's more likely going to have an LPV approach there. Um, so KKLS, I'll check this one out. So I'm just going to go back to Navigraph, put in KKLS, and click this little map, and then click runway 12, and here we get an LPV. So this is a candidate. Awesome. Um, and then the Jeppesen charts look a little bit different than the FAA charts. 
uh, from what I know, like pretty much everyone uses Jefferson charts when they're doing IFR procedures. Um, they have to be paid for though. That's the downside. The FAA charts in the US are free to look up, but the Jefferson charts cost money. Uh, this program I'm using Navigraph gives you access to the Jefferson charts as part of your uh, subscription. So it's really nice. Even though it says Navigraph charts intended for flight sim only. And that's probably because, you know, they probably have slightly outdated ones potentially, or they're not 100% up to date all the time. You can see this one says May 2020. So it's possible there's a newer version of this chart. Um, I'm not sure for sure. So these are just for sim use. But down here at the bottom left, we can see we have an LPV approach available. So you can see the difference in the minimums. LNAV gets us down to 960 feet above the ground. That's the one in parentheses. Whereas the LPV approach gets us down to 588 feet above the ground. And mattering the approach, um, sometimes the LPV approaches are just as good as ILS approaches and get you down to 200 feet above the ground, which is awesome. And if you've seen the FAA charts before, this looks really similar. You have the same map view in the middle that shows our waypoints from like an overhead map view. And so we know that we'll be coming in from whichever direction we're coming in from is what will determine our initial approach fix. So here you can see there's coming in from the north. We go to this Onals waypoint or one more towards the west, a little as this Winlow waypoint. So mattering which direction we come in from, that'll change our initial approach fix. Um, and then down here, you can see there's this one low that comes up to this initial approach fix right here, a MAVE or a MAVE. Um, so those are our options when we pick the procedure is to pick what is the initial approach fix or the first fix that we'll be on when we start the procedure, mattering which direction we're coming from. So what I'm gonna do is just go back and program this in. So I'm gonna first go to Skypark and we're gonna accept this mission. So we're going from Sierra 12 to KKLS. So I'm just gonna go here and put that in, Sierra 12 to Kilo Kilo Lima Sierra. And then I have it set in IFR low altitude airways already. Um, I like picking low altitude usually because I can see more of the ground and the terrain, which, you know, is fun. And then here, you know, it's only 95 miles, so about a half an hour. So I'm not, I'm okay with being at, you know, under 18,000 feet. Hey Merlin, uh, I saw Neofly supports multiplayer. I did too, and I have no idea how it works. I wish I knew, but apparently you can do some sort of co-op missions with Neofly. So it's like a multi-pilot mission. And I, have, I haven't looked into it yet, but I'm gonna write that down and try to figure it out. <laughs> I actually don't uh, use flight sim with any friends. Uh, all of my gamer friends are from, you know, playing like Call of Duty and uh, Battlefield and Dota and, you know, games like that. Uh, none of them are into flight sim, but I would love to try that sometime. If any of you guys fly Neo fly, maybe we could give it a try. It could be pretty cool. I know it shows like a setting where you have to put in a server address or something like that. So I think somebody has to host and then you give uh, your friends your IP address and it lets you connect. But I don't know how that uh, actually works with the multiplayer missions, but I'm I'm curious. Um, OK, so I have the flight plan set up. So we have IFR selected. So it's given us a recommended flight plan. Um, when I'm just doing this casually, I do this if, you, if you're like you know, learning IFR procedures and stuff, you would of course figure out your own flight plan through, you know, Sky Vector or like ForeFlight or whatever you use. In the sim world, we can use things like, uh, you know, we can either use the Microsoft Flight Sim recommended one um, and then Navigraph, for example, um, here you can actually do the same thing. So you can go up here to flights and hit new flight. And then I can input the flight myself and I can give I can get an auto generated route. Um, so it'll do a route suggestion uh, just like Microsoft Flight Sim does. Or you could use SimBrief as well. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the same flight that Microsoft suggested. So I'll type that in here. So we're going from Sierra 12 down to KKLS. And then um, I'm just gonna hit create. 
Now up here at the top, I can hit type route and I can enter the rest of the waypoints. So I'm just gonna move that off to the side on my screen and then I'm just gonna copy the waypoints that are there. So, so we're going to add low reef UBG loath KKLS. All right, and so now we have the matching we have the matching uh, route here. So the flight plan is the same in Navigraph as it is there. Uh, I'm just doing that just so when I glance over at Navigraph, it'll be the same. And now what's really cool, let me make this a little bit bigger. So in Navigraph, what you can do, kind of like what you can do in ForeFlight and other similar apps, is you can overlay the approach uh, document, the approach plate right on top of, um, right here on top of the map. So if you go to the top here and click approaches, so this is our approach. Uh, we don't know the transition point. Oh, the transition point is loath. So I can actually delete that waypoint because it's redundant. So up here at the end, it says RNAV 12 and the transition point is loath or loath. When I click that, I can click show chart overlay. And now we see it right there on top of the moving map. So as we fly this, we'll actually see our aircraft right on the moving map. I feel like I have it backwards, but I don't. We are flying from south to north. I thought we were flying southbound, but we're flying northbound. All right, cool. So I'm going to go back to Sky Park. I'm going to start loading in. I'm just going to load it on the runway. We're going to do daytime so there's more to look at and load in right on the runway and for the approach I can pick the RNAV 12 myself um, if I pick the RNAV 12 up here uh, in the Microsoft Flight Sim menu this is really just a shortcut to choosing this within the G1000 or sorry the G3000 that's in the TBM um, it just saves you time if you want to choose it within using the G3000, you can do that too. Um, but if you want it to be automatically programmed, everything that you do in the world map just gets automatically programmed into the Garmin. All right, so now I can begin the flight here. And we have to pay money to begin this flight with Sky Park because we're not uh, at Sierra 12. So it pays to transport us there instantaneously. So we paid, a, we had a, a zero second flight which is the future. It looks like we're delivering uh, burglar and fire alarm parts. Very exciting. Something I like about NeoFly though is like I played quite a bit of NeoFly after I did the stream. The variety of missions in NeoFly is awesome. I love it. Um, Sky Park is really easy to use. They have those cool like uh, experience ones where they, like, they fly you to scenic areas and um, have some background about it, which is really neat. But as as far as like variety of missions, Scott, uh, you know, NeoFly just has a really, really cool uh, variety of missions. I like them all. I think if Sky Park puts in like a crazy variety of missions, puts in like those cool search and rescue types, VIPs, hel they have some helicopter ones, but I don't think they're meant to actually be landing on helicopter pads like you can filter for helicopter missions um, but what I think it is is just um, short it's just short distance trips more based on the length not necessarily like where you're landing Sierra one two traffic day or two one kilo India Pave taking all right so we're gonna load the uh, load the parts all right I started right on the runway so we'll get airborne first, and then we'll look at the approach once we're on our way. Landing gear. Landing gear. Whoops. My gear uh, switch was still up. All right, parking brake is off. And the game is very laggy right now as it's just loading in. Oh man. I gotta turn my settings down. Sorry, one second. All right, let's go back to high end with ultra clouds. 
And then uh, glass cockpit refresh rate. I saw some people posting about this that if you turn this to low, you save a lot of frames. Like some people get like 10 frames per second extra by just turning that to low, uh, which is pretty crazy. I did start the mission this time, I think. Did I? Yeah, I'm ready to go. <laughs> Thanks for checking. Yeah, I forget that like every other time. Okay, I'm going to silence these warnings real quick. Um, I actually haven't flown the TBM since the patch either, so I'm excited to see how this goes because they made a ton of changes to the TBM. Uh, let's see, they changed the TBM, the King Air, and the Cessna Grand Caravan. Um, so all three stock turboprops have had their flight model, their engine performance and stuff tweaked. Um, so we'll see how that goes. I know one of the bug fixes was that Previously, when you had the inertial separator turned on, you could not get 100% torque. When you have it off, I think you can go up to like 110% torque. Um, but there was a bug where when you had it on, you couldn't even get up to 100% torque. So it was really limiting the engine power. All right, so let's turn the... Oh, what? Oh, do I have that set to a switch? Keto heat. I do have that on a switch. Um, I've been meaning to set all my hardware switches on my Bravo, uh, my Honeycomb Bravo Quadrant, but um, I'm waiting to label. I want to label all of them and figure out where I want them exactly. Oh, damage back on. Thank you. Yes, I do. I want the true to life back on. I did just turn the damage off, but um, I pretty much use the true to life preset, but then I turn... What do I have on? I have assisted checklist on up here. And then I have the taxi ribbon turned on down here. So yeah, let's turn crash damage on. Thank you, sir. And you're a better streamer than I am. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And outside air temperature is 12, but we're probably going to fly through those clouds. Oh, another update they made. I haven't, I haven't really looked through all the updates yet myself. I just looked through the release notes and tested like one thing. But on the PFD, or sorry, the MFD, the weather radar is supposed to show precipitation now instead of just cloud coverage. Um, so that should be a lot more useful. So it is in weather mode already. So all of this that we see is not just cloud coverage, but is actually actual precipitation. Um, and... Let's see if I hit back and click map. Yeah, they fixed this other bug where when you switch from the weather mode to map mode, the zoom levels were different. So it would like zoom your map in or out, mattering which mode you were in differently. So they, uh, they fixed that as well. I wish I could just leave the weather selection on. That would be awesome. All right, I'm going to turn the rotate and VY bugs on. So 90 and 110 knots. And okay, I hit B already and set our altimeter, so that's accurate. I'm going to sync our heading bug directly ahead. Turn the yaw damper on so it's ready for when we enable autopilot. And why can't I switch over? Oh, flight level change mode. So let's turn our altitude to what they assigned us. Climb and maintain 6,000 feet. All right, so I'm turning my physical knob here. Whoops. To go up to 6,000. All right, there's 6,000 right there on the selected altitude. And then flight level change, we want to climb at 90 knots. 90 is our VY. We can climb faster, like a cruise climb. Maybe I'll do like 110. This thing is just so fast. I mean, we're going to get up there so fast anyway. Only up to 6,000 feet. All right, I'm going to do 110. All right, so autopilot's all set for when we want to turn it on and started the mission and if we fly through any of that precipitation i'm gonna leave the um leave the de-icing system off until we get up here near this precipitation and if we fly through that we're gonna see if, how accurate the weather is now um so i see clouds right in front of us already um so we'll see if we fly through any of that and it says it's precipitation then i'll turn on the uh, de-icing I mean, I don't know, like, anytime you fly through clouds, I guess it's potential for moisture, right? But 
I don't know how sensitive the precipitation weather radar is. Anyway, inertial separator is on, which is good. So we leave that on until, we'll leave that on the whole flight, right? Below 10,000 feet. We're only going up to six. So we'll just leave that on. Everything else is set. The mission is started. And I'll bring up the Navigraph. I'm just going to set up Navigraph on the side. Um, so what I can do is close some of this stuff. And then I just am going to prepare this guy. So once we get closer, so I can open this in like a windowed mode. Like this and just get this ready on the side. There we go, something like this. So then uh, once we're going, I can, uh, we can see our moving map on here. It'll actually show us uh, where we are once that's going. All right, cool. And then I can show you the RNAV approach. All right, so we're gonna take off. Our rotate speed is 90 knots. Let's go. Parking brake was still on. Yeah, I'm curious if this is going to feel any different uh, than it did the last time I flew the TBM. All right, we're at 70. You can really see that slow refresh rate on the cockpit, though. Like, there's 90. It's supposed to save a lot of a lot on the frames, but uh, yeah, that's the uh, that's the expense. All right, gear coming up. It looks less useful because uh, it's so choppy, but at the same time, if, if the performance is a lot better, then uh, I'll take it. All right, and flaps are up. I need to pitch up higher. I want to pitch up for 120, 110. And waiting for ATC. All right. Autopilot is on. Um, do I have ATC turned on? Oh, I actually think I turned off ATC because I was playing around a little bit with VATSIM. So I turned off all ATC. Oh no, it's on. Okay. All right, contacting departure. Eugene, departure day or two, one kilo India Papa is passing 2,100 feet, climbing 6,000 feet. All right, we're just going to wait for them to call us uh, to let us know to go under course. Continue as planned. Switch over to nav mode. Kind of surprised it's turning to the left. It would have been faster to turn to the right, I think. All right, inertial separator is on and we leave it on. All our lights and everything should still be on because we started on the runway. Nav, strobe, landing lights on under 10,000. Cool. It's kind of hard to look at the G1000 or the G3000 when it's that laggy. Like, see how rarely it updates the um, information on it. But, I mean, game's running really nicely right now. All right, so in the sky park, it says that we're flying. So we're flying here to KKLS, which is in Kelso, Washington, Southwest Washington Regional Airport. The runway is lit, 4,300 feet in length. Runways one, two, and three, zero. And we're uh, set up for the one, two RNAV approach, which is an LPV approach. So we'll get uh, lateral and vertical guidance. All right, so here we go. We're flying into some clouds. So it could potentially mean that we ice up if it's cold enough. So it's negative one degrees, so I'm curious to see. But you can see there's no precipitation shown on the weather radar, which is on right now. So I'm curious to see if it ices us up right away, flying through any clouds, or only if we fly, fly through uh, clouds that are, you know, to be known you know, there's no moisture in the clouds, you know, so curious what happens. Uh, climb and maintain 8,000 feet. Climb and maintain 8,000 feet, day or kilo, India Papa.
There we go, 8,000 feet. Back to flight level change. And since we're up higher now, I can turn that speed. We're, we're going 210 knots, so I can raise that. We can climb a little faster of an airspeed now. Well, is it already le Wait, why is it leveling us off already? Oh, just because we're climbing way too fast. All right, yeah, 2,000 feet comes real fast. So it doesn't look like we're icing yet, which is cool. So that seems accurate, right? We're flying through, you know, some clouds, but they're not, there's no precipitation. And even though it's uh, below freezing, we're not icing up. But coming up ahead on the route, there is this area of green here. So in theory, through this, there's, we're most likely gonna ice up through this at these temperatures. Dragon, what's up? How's it going, dude? All right, again, we're going through clouds. No icing yet. De-icing system's off completely. We just have the pedo, uh, the pedo left and right turned on. Um, but the windshield prop and airframe are all turned off. Cool. All right, that's pretty awesome. I, I really love that they updated the weather radar. I mean, you know, everybody's going to, including me, is going to complain that they didn't do many performance fixes, but man. Oh, the iPad thing's up. Crap, sorry. I'm sorry. My bad. I need to, let me change something. There's a way I can have it automatically switch. Sorry about that. Um, anyway, yeah, you can see there's no, uh, sorry, you guys might have missed part of the, the cloud breakout right there. Going good. How about me? I'm good. I'm uh, just checking out. I checked out a new like amphibious plane that got released today. It's like an ultralight. It's like a flying, uh, a flying boat, like a small flying boat, which was really funny to fly around. We tried to launch it off Niagara Falls. Uh, it was a little, uh, it wasn't very spectacular of a stunt. It's kind of boring, uh, but now I'm just doing some approaches. Doing a couple approaches, um, approach procedures, which are super nerdy. Uh, it's not as exciting as, uh, you know, playing an entertaining video game that you're used to seeing me play or something, but I really love, really love the flight sim. Flying boat, yeah. It literally looks like an inflatable boat, but instead of a motor, it's got a giant, per a giant propeller on the back and wings on top and you just go. It is really funny. I was surprised to see it in the store. Um, so I had to try it out for a couple hours. It was really funny. So we're doing a cargo mission right now. And so as part of this, we're gonna do this approach right here. So let me check our distance really quickly. That's one thing that we don't have is total distance. I don't think they fixed that. Yeah, so this distance up here on the MFD, pretty sure it should there should be an on route distance that shows our our total estimated remaining time and uh, total estimated remaining or total remaining distance as well. But we don't get that. All right, Merlin, thanks for hanging out again. Thanks for the help, making sure I accepted the mission and stuff. Appreciate it. I'm just gonna do uh, this RNAV approach and I'll probably be done for the night too. Get to get my ass working on some uh, actual tutorials. <laughs> Take it easy, thanks for hanging out, dude. All right, so we are coming up to some actual weather. So I expect some icing. We'll see how it goes. We're at negative three degrees Celsius outside. Alpha Kilo Indian Papa contact Seattle Center on one two five decimal eight. All right, Seattle Center on one two five eight. So let's go ahead and do that. One two five decimal eight for day or Kilo India Papa. Navcom one two five eight transfer. Press one on the keyboard. Seattle Center day or two one Kilo India Papa eight thousand feet. I just noticed the pitch trim wheel was kind of just going crazy. Seattle Center altimeter 
Like, what is what is it doing right now? What is that? It's a little concerning. Let me see. Okay. That's not bad. It looks like I'm just kind of freaking out a bit, but it's not going to 100% or down. I'm not sure if that's a bug or um, just windy out, but I think that's fine. All right, we're going to continue altimeter 3021. So we're going to update that right here. Hit B on the keyboard, 3021. And then continue to brafe as planned. So that's our next waypoint, two miles to brafe. And I'm just going to put this off to the side a little bit here. So we can kind of keep an eye on it. Um, and if I go back to the map, we can see a moving map here. So this is where we are right now on Brave. So then we have to come up here. We're going to this VOR. And then once we hit that VOR, we'll probably get the assigned approach from ATC. Okay, here's the icing. Cool. So this is kind of cool. So compared to how it was before, this is a small amount of icing. Uh, the problem, and I'm going to turn on the de-icing right now. Let's turn it all on. Um, so we should see it slowly melt off. And the problem before the patch was that you would go from 0% to 100% icing. And then once you had 100% icing, it pretty much never came off the plane. Um, so supposedly that's fixed now. So de-icing should help with the windshield and the leading edge of the wing right here. All right, I'm going to take the uh, chart off for now. Bring that back up when we get assigned the approach, though. The goal is to fly. <laughs> the goal is flying with weather, flying to the worst part of it for the fun times, especially if you can find the hail core. <laughs> fly right through there. I remember uh, when shortly after the sim came out, me and my girlfriend took it. We took a small. We took the Cessna, the small Cessna, like 152. Um, where we take it into like Alaska and then turn the weather like this mountainous area in Alaska at this little tiny airport and then we turned all of the custom weather to the worst possible case like with like 100 mile an hour winds from multiple directions competing with each other in like overlapping layers of wind and cloud coverage uh, and we tried to take off in it and stay stay afloat in it it was crazy it was like being a tornado it was it was ridiculous <laughs> She was really good at it, actually, which isn't surprising because she actually flies airplanes. But uh, yeah, I failed qu quite hard, but she was able to... I, I took off and got slammed into a mountain almost instantly. She floated and and I think almost performed the like emergency landing in a field like with all that happening. I think at the very last second, she like hit a tree or something, but she pretty much almost... Uh, Almost did a whole emergency landing. It was ridiculous. <laughs> so, I mean, this is... Dude, this is so awesome. So, now that this accurately shows where there's actually precipitation and not just clouds, you can anticipate the icing and needing the de-icing system as you're flying through it instead of just always having to turn it on no matter what types of clouds you're flying through. So, it's super cool. Um... Supposedly, too, the, there was an autopilot flyback bug where it turned around at a 180 degree turn on an approach. Supposedly, I think that was fixed. They didn't say it was fixed, but I haven't tested it myself yet. So, I mean, I'll, I'll only see in time if, if I run into it again, and hopefully not. All right, so we're almost at this VOR right here, Uniform Bravo Golf. And once we hit that, our next waypoint is to Loth, which is our initial approach fix. So that starts our approach procedure. And we chose the RNAV approach for runway one and two. So if I bring that chart up, you can see So this is where we are right now. We're almost over here at this, oh, it's the Newburgh VOR. 
So once we hit that, we'll probably hear from ATC and they'll assign us our approach. And our approach starts up here at this loath waypoint, which is right at this intersection right here. Okay, sorry, you can hardly see that. Make that bigger. Yeah, so where that green dash line ends, where that uh, this one here begins, this purple one now, that begins the approach procedure. So we can see actually on the uh, approach plate, it says loath right there. It's kind of hidden a little bit, but that is the direction we're coming in from, is that waypoint. So once we get to load, we'll hit Amave. Sorry, load isn't actually the IF, sorry. Amave or Amave is our initial approach fix. And then we go over here to Yapik, and then over here to X UXAL, Uxale. And then here to, these are so hard to say, Anagy. Um, and energy right here is the final approach fix. So that's where right before we hit that we'll want to be configured for landing pretty much And that's where we can expect the glides path to come in. So So if you're familiar with an ILS um, The difference between the two is really just that one is radio based navigation and this is essentially the digital uh, equivalent of that approach so we're using our GPS system, which is a WAS enabled GPS system. LPV is a WAS approach, and it is very much like an ILS in that the minimums are really low, and we also get horizontal and vertical guidance. The only difference in the way we fly it is really that we don't have to worry about switching over to our navigation uh, radio one or two for our navigation source. We just stay on our FMS or GPS nav source, so we don't have to change it over. We still need to arm approach mode like before. Um, if we, Especially if we're using autopilot, we want it to capture the glide path. Um, but other than that, it'll work the same way. We'll just have magenta needles instead of green needles. So if you're used to an ILS, you'll see a green uh, CDI needle here. Instead, it'll stay on magenta. And instead of a green glide slope, diamond you'll have a magenta colored glide path diamond so that's our gps or was lpv glide path but other than that um, as long as you look at the approach plate and you know that for that rnav approach there's an lpv approach available you will get um that vertical guidance okay so they said expect rnav runway one to approach clear to loath so they did assign us the approach we wanted. They didn't give us a visual approach. If they did assign us a visual approach uh, and said, uh, you know, visual for runway one, two, um, or visual for runway five or whatever, or sorry, what's the other one? Three, three, one, I think. Um, then what we could do is hit select another approach right here and force air traffic control to assign us the approach that we want to fly. Um, you know, realistically, uh, you could request a specific approach from an air traffic controller and they may or may not give it to you. In the sim, they will give it to us every time just because it's a sim. Um, or what you can do is just be surprised with what approach they give you. So I like to do that where um, it's kind of cool practice to fly one of these missions and wait for air traffic control to assign you an approach. And then all of a sudden you have to figure out the approach, uh, look up the approach plate and procedure, brief it really quickly, and then fly that approach is kind of fun. But you can always you know, guess at the most likely approach. For this airport, there's only one RNAV approach available. So if it's not the visual, it's going to be this one. So we're already set up for it. Um, so that is what's programmed in down here. If they gave us a different one, we could hit procedures. Let me zoom in a little bit more. One bug they didn't fix is when you switch to an instrument view, you can't zoom in. Um, so I have to do something like this. Uh, so what you can do if they assigned a different approach in the TBM is go to this procedures menu. And under approaches, you would just go here and select a different approach. But as you can see, there's only one available here. So we choose the different approach and load it. Uh, and usually we load and activate it. Why are we turning here? What's going on? What What is our... They totally didn't fix the bug. This is what I was just talking about, that I had to verify if they fixed or not. 
and it's literally turning us around 180 degrees right now so clearly it's not fixed oh man what a bummer they said uh, you know they didn't specifically say they fixed this but this is the 180 degree turnaround bug you're seeing it right now so i was in autopilot um for the for this flight for this flight right i have autopilot enabled and what happened is as soon as we crossed over this waypoint ubg this vor it's switching us back to go to that waypoint again um that's really weird i didn't change anything we're still in nav mode so you can see up here we're still in nav mode we're still in altitude hold mode autopilot's on i haven't changed anything we didn't change the approach i went and looked at a different procedure but we didn't load or activate anything different um so yeah unfortunately this is this is still a bug damn um, so what we can do, let me try this. So, <laughs> it's a little scary to do this because sometimes it'll mess your whole flight plan up. But what I'm going to do is just go down here. So our next waypoint is loathe. So what I'm going to do is click loathe and click direct to. And then I hit activate direct to. So that should delete this previous waypoint and it should take us, there we go, from our current position straight to loathe. All right, so that's working as expected. So that's good. Um, but it should not have gone back to a waypoint we already passed. That's the bug that, it, that they haven't fixed, so that's a bummer. All right, so we're turning back around to go north to get to Loathe. All right, so anyway, we got the RNAV approach assigned that we thought we would get. Um, so you can see we're down here. So we have a little ways to go until we get to um, the waypoint Loathe, which is right here. So that's our transition waypoint. Um, let's see, if I take the chart off, uh, you can see that Loathe, you might be able to see this, it's small, but what I'm circling right here with my mouse is Loathe. So that's a transition waypoint. So that's the waypoint that we're using to transition to start the approach. And then we're going to be going to the initial approach fix, which is the actual waypoint that starts the approach. So that's this point right here, a Mave, A-M-A-V-E. Let me make that just a little bit bigger. So then we're going to a Mave right here. And then from there, you can see we're turning to the right. Now, what we have, though, is a we have our altitudes that are our minimums or our mandatory altitudes while we're climbing through each of these waypoints or we're descending through each of these waypoints. So what we need are responsible for up until we get to the point of our final approach fix, we're responsible to manually descend to each of these altitudes. Now, ATC is going to remind us they're going to give us a heads up and tell us to descend to 4000 feet, uh, which is the altitude we need to be at for that first waypoint, um, which is over here, which is Yapik. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and acknowledge the handoff and contact our next controller. So we're switching over to Seattle Center and contacting them. We're going to tell them our call sign and our altitude. Seattle Center, day or two, one kilo, India Papa, 8,000 feet. They're going to say continue. Okay, hit B on my keyboard to update our altimeter. Continue to load as planned. All right, so we're just going to continue on. Okay, so yeah, by the time we get to load, you can see after load, it shows us this, um, right on this line here, there is a 4,000 foot uh, altitude listed here along this line um, that I'm circling. So what we're gonna do is, of course, go down to 4,000 feet at that point, but they're probably gonna tell us 4,000 feet before we get there, so we will be down to that altitude. But if they don't, we'll just know that um, we need to get down to that altitude. I'm gonna make that a little bit bigger here. So we take load here to a Mave or a Mave. That's the initial approach fix. Again, we see 4,000 feet. And then for Yapik, we'll be at 4,000 feet. So it's also shown here in this view, which is basically a sideways view showing our descent as if we're on the ground looking at the plane descending from the side. And so because we're using autopilot and we're using a G3000, we're just able to follow these waypoint to waypoint to waypoint using the GPS system. And I have autopilot on, so it's just doing all the all the turns for us automatically. 
So we just need to manage our throttle and we need to uh, manage the altitude changes. So we can also see the step downs here. So from Yapek to Kosra or Kosra, we're gonna go down to 3,300 feet. Then once we hit Kosra, we're gonna go down to 2,700 feet by the time we hit Uxale and then down to 1,900 feet by that time we hit, hit Anagy. So when we get to Anagy at 1,900 feet, there's this little symbol right here, this Maltese cross symbol. And that shows us what the final approach fix is. And there at the final approach fix, right before we get to that, we'll wanna be ready for landing. So we'll be slow enough, we'll have our gear down, probably have one notch of flaps down for uh, to start the landing. And then when we hit uh, Anagy, that's this dotted area right here is where we're going to get our vertical guidance that comes with the LPV approach. So LPV RNAV approaches work in Microsoft Flight Simulator. LNAV VNAV does not because in general VNAV does not work. So that disqualifies us just because of the sim right now from using an LNAV VNAV. So you can't program in a VNAV uh, like descent profile to follow. Uh, if we were able to do that, then it would have like an advisory, um, an advisory uh, vertical guidance on our on our uh, PDF right here or our PFD right here, so we could follow that down more precisely and, uh, instead of doing the step downs that we have to do. Okay, descend and maintain four thousand feet. So that's exactly descend what we were expecting. Four thousand feet, day or kilo India Papa. So I'm gonna go over here, change our altitude down to four thousand feet, and start our descent. So they're calling out that 4,000 feet because that's part of the approach procedure. And then we're gonna vertical speed. And we're going about 230 knots. So our rate of descent can be about 1,200, whoops, about 1,200 feet per minute. And then I'm gonna pull back on our torque. All right, our anti-icing is still on because through this descent, we're going to fly through more precipitation. We can see that here on the weather radar. So we're going to go through some of these clouds. So I'm going to keep it on uh, all the way till the end just because there's precipitation right there too. We'll see if we have clouds under this layer, how low they are. What I should be doing right now is getting the weather to listen to the cloud, the levels that the clouds are at. Okay, so we can do that by putting in our destination waypoint into the touchscreen down here. So if I go down to waypoint info and then airport, what I can do is enter in the name of our arrival airport. So here, select airport, KKLS. I can go to frequencies and here's an AWOS. So that's an automated weather observation system. I'm gonna put it on our COM2 radio and then click on NAVCOM. So we're listening to both frequencies right now. So we can listen to the clouds. And all the clouds are above ground level, so. Sky condition, few clouds at 600 feet, few clouds at 4,200 feet, 42. Temperature, 14C dew point. So the lowest cloud level is at 600 feet. So I'm gonna turn that off by hitting this button right here that says monitor. So now we're just listening to the one. Uh, COM1, which is where our ATC is. So we just heard um, that there are clouds at 600 feet, and that's 600 feet above the ground. Now, if we look at our approach procedure, our minimum altitude, the ground level, the lowest we can go is 588 feet. So we can only go about 12 feet below where the clouds supposedly end. Um, so that's cutting it really close with the minimums, right? Like we want several hundred feet of difference between those two. And by the time we get there, you know, they're not necessarily at the same altitude right now. Like that report was made a certain number of minutes ago. Um, so it's not, it's, we can't expect it to be at exactly 600 feet still at those, at that, uh, cloud level right there. So this is going to be a little bit sketchy. I'm just, uh, I'm going to land it no matter what, uh, just because I'm playing in the sim and I can do that. But um, what would happen is we just got the turnaround bug again. Dude, look, it's turning us around again. What? 
I'm gonna switch to heading mode really quickly and turn us back the direction we're supposed to be going. This is crazy. It's turning us around a second time. This is this is actually worse than it was before. This is crazy. Dude, this is worse than before the patch. I'm gonna go back to the flight plan and now I wanna go direct to AMA. I'm gonna this time do activate leg to waypoint. It should be taking us to the next waypoint. See the magenta line is in the wrong spot. Oh, are we past the waypoint? We're going back to it, so we'll see if it updates. Okay, looks like it updated. Let's switch back to nav mode. Okay, now the magenta line's right. All right, now I'm worried that by the time we get to the next waypoint, it's gonna pull us back again. Uh, so we'll see what happens here. So far, uh, not very happy <laughs> with what's going on in this version with autopilot and with the flight plan. I mean, it's really the flight plan. It's not necessarily an autopilot thing. The problem is that the flight plan is updating and, and reactivating waypoints that we've already passed. And the autopilot is reacting to that. So it's a little, it's a little not good. Um, okay, so I'm going to bring back up the approach here. So we're not yet at AMAVE. We're going to be uh, here. Uh, we're between load and AMAVE. We should see our plane show up here in a little bit. I think it'll show up in this mode. Um, so we're going to AMAVE down to 4,000 feet. So that's set in the autopilot. We're going to hold 4,000 feet. And once we get there, we're going to we're going to stick to 4,000 feet through the next two waypoints. Um, or the next, yeah, through AMAVE, we're sticking to 4,000 feet. When we get to Yapek, we're going to also be at 4,000 feet. We can see right here. But then when we cross Yapek, we need to go down to 3,300 feet by Kosra, then 2,700 by Uxhale, 1,900 by Anagy, or I guess it's Anagy. Um, and then so after we get the 1,900 to Anagy, we're good, and we should have our vertical guidance down to the runway, just like we would with an ILS, except we're doing the RNAV LPV approach. So LP, just remember LPV and how I remember it is just, just connecting the two. So LPV is like an ILS. LP, if there was an LP approach, so they weren't able to give you vertical guidance, LP would be like having a localizer only approach. So that's the WAS equivalent. And then LNAV, VNAV we can't use because they don't work in Microsoft Flight Sim. And I need to test LNAV, but LNAV would give us just lateral guidance, but less precision than an LP uh, lateral guidance, which is horizontal guidance. All right, well, we'll see what happens when we hit this next waypoint here. Um, it pulls a 180 at the last waypoint before landing. <laughs> yeah, that's possible. Uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, it's going to try to do a 180 at every waypoint, apparently. I mean, right now it's saying the right thing. It's saying we're going from Loth to Amave or Amave, Amav, uh, which is right. But as soon as we cross Amav, is it going to try to take us back to Loth again? Uh, that's what we're going to find out. I'm going to turn off the weather for now because we know we're going to be in the clouds until we get to our minimums. So our minimums are here. So under the LPV approach here, this section shows our minimums. We need one and three quarters mile, one and three quarter miles of visibility. And we need to be, have the runway in sight as well at 588 feet. So that means when we get to 588 feet AGL or 608 feet on our altimeter, that we need to be able to see one and three quarter miles visually. Otherwise, we're not allowed to land. And if we if we don't meet those minimums, we follow the missed procedure, the missed approach procedure, which is in text right up here. Climb to 800 feet, climbing right turn to 4,000 feet, and we go directly back to the waypoint Amave right there that we're crossing over now, and we fly a hold pattern. Um, and then you can also see the go around procedure, or sorry, the missed approach procedure is also down here in these boxes. So right here, starting with the 800, that means 
climb to 800, then a climbing right turn to 4,000, direct to, and then this waypoint, a Mave, or a Mave. So the clouds are supposedly at 600 feet, so that's 600 feet above the ground, and our minimum is 588 feet above the ground. So that gives us 12 feet. We will be exit the clouds only with 12 feet left to our minimum, supposedly. I mean, they're probably not at exactly 600 feet, right? So realistically, this is probably a missed approach because the clouds are so low. But because we have a sim and because we can, we're just going to see how... We're, we're going to just assume that we're able to fly it, see how low it goes, see how low we can get. So they just gave us another call out. Descend and maintain 3,300. Descend and maintain 3,300. So it's actually uh, a little early. We don't need to be down to 3,300 until Kostra. I guess they're giving us a heads up. So that's nice of them. So uh, thank you for the reminder. So we're going to end up 3,300. Vertical speed. All right, going down to 3,300. And I'm slowing down a bit. We are going to see nothing until we get down there. I don't know if there's a break in the clouds between... Uh, there might be a break between our 4,000 feet and down to 600 feet. Uh, they just tell you the bottoms. They don't really tell us the tops, so we don't, uh, we don't know how thick this cloud layer is. Actually, the weather radar in this, we can look at horizontal mode, right? Or sorry, vertical mode and see. All right, descend and maintain 2,700. So they're giving us all the callouts, which is nice. So we don't have to, um, we don't have to look those up ourselves descend on the chart. And maintain 2,700 feet day or kilo India Papa. So vertical speed down again. And I'm just slowing us down quite a bit. We're gonna check on our chart here. So we're up there. Um, we just are passing cost for us, so we're about at UXL, UX, UXL. And you can see the glide slope as well, so oh, we can see the ground a little bit now. All right, nice. Um, we're still at 2,800 feet, so the clouds either moved up or there's going to be another layer. All right, they want us to go to 1,900. So that's our last uh, altitude there, 1,900. And then we'll get vertical guidance. So we're going down to 1,900. Descend and maintain 1,900 feet day or kilo India Papa. And so we needed to be at 1,900 before uh, that waypoint right here, Anagy. And you can see at Anagy right here at 1,900 that we will get our vertical guidance. All right, yeah, it looks like there's another layer of clouds there. So that's the layer that'll go down to our minimum of 600. Or 500. It, the cloud layer is at 600, supposedly, when we check the weather. Um, our minimum is 588 above ground, so very little wiggle room. All right, so we're going down to 1900. Now you can see here the G, that's ma it's magenta instead of green. If it was green, or it would be green if we were doing an ILS, which has vertical guidance. When you do a WAS uh, approach, the RNAV with an LPV, the LPV approach, you get vertical guidance, but you can see it's magenta. So the magenta for GPS stuff, and um, okay, we need to switch over approach six miles north, six miles northwest. Okay, so I'm putting my gear down because we're about to cross our final approach fix, so we're getting ready. Gear down and one notch of flaps. And we're at the altitude, but we don't, we're above the vertical guidance already. So I turn on approach mode, but um, we're not at that. We're already crossing over the final approach fix, so we're too high already. Um, so we shouldn't have caught the glide, we should have caught the glide slope right there at Anagy. Um, but we've already passed Anagy and it's well below us, so we need to descend and catch up to it. So I need to catch up to that pretty badly, pretty quickly here. 
Yeah, we're way too high already because of that. <laughs> not good, not good. So something was wrong where we were at 1900, but we didn't get our guidance. Um, we didn't get our guidance, uh, vertical guidance, where we thought we would. So now I'm just dive bombing to catch up to it. Realistically, we would just cancel the approach because <laughs> that's like this is just we have to we have to go down really fast to catch up to this. Okay, so we did catch up to it. I mean, thankfully, we can descend really quickly in this. Can't tell if you're side slipping, if you're going to land next to the field. I wasn't side slipping, but uh, I did take us down like 1500 feet per minute. I mean, the turboprop can go down really quickly. So we were able to catch up, but that was not that's not good at all. Like we shouldn't have uh, had to go down that fast to catch up to the glide slope. I'm surprised the glide slope wasn't um, it wasn't available at the final approach fix. It was pretty far below us. Um, we should have had it at our 1900 foot altitude. Oh, great. I'm I'm talking so much that I'm stalling. Um, we should have had it at our 19 foot, 1900 foot altitude, but we didn't. So, um, so that was kind of crappy. So yeah, I don't know if it's just like hit or miss because. I should turn off autopilot. Um, I don't know if it's hit or miss just because of the programming of the approaches. Like it'll be, you know, it'll vary on a case, it'll be a case by case basis how accurate it is. This is the first one I've done since the update. Um, so I'm not sure if that was just a bug. I mean, I, clearly there's some kind of bug with the approach because we were supposed to have vertical guidance there. Um, and it's not like an ILS where like the radio transmission could be interrupted by things like WAS is like very reliable by comparison. So we should be able to expect um, having that uh, vertical guidance at that point. So I did just like descend super fast and um, yeah, that was not a uh, not a very professional landing at all. <laughs> I do want to try another one though, maybe a little bit shorter of a flight, just to see. First of all, I want to know if the um, turnaround bug is going to happen again, because um, that's really frustrating. It did it to us twice in the same flight, so that's kind of a pain in the ass. Um, and then I'm also curious to try another LPV approach to see if they're accurate or not, uh, especially before I make a tutorial that's like, hey, you guys should be using LPV approaches. Check them out; they're they're awesome, and most of them have the wrong uh, vertical guidance info. I also don't think I responded to, uh, oh right, because it's untowered. I didn't announce our landing or anything like that. All right, so that was, uh, that was a, little sh a little shady right there. It didn't die, yeah. I guess that's a plus. We're not dead, so that's good. That's like a that was a great uh like great weather to do an uh LPV approach in though, just because the weather was so bad. Like that's just awesome. Oops, sorry, dude. We didn't die, but they almost did. She almost did. Okay, parking brake. Let's shut her down. Let's deliver our goods. Deliver the burglar and fire alarm parts. Very important to get paid. All right, let's do one more with an LPV approach. Try to pick something a little shorter distance. Ground crew's expendable. They're not real people. 
their AI. It's fine. I feel too bad about it. Let's go. I'm going to do like, I don't know. Let's do like 70 miles. I mean, there may not even be like when you do 70 miles, you may not even be outside of like a transition waypoint. So it's kind of hard to do a really short approach procedure. I'll just do a near 100 miles again. We'll see. Uh, let's go a little. Let's see. Where's the weather crappy? Just see where there's uh there's some more weather we can fly into first too. Mm -mm -mm. All right, world map. And if I go to filters down here, I can change to precipitation. All right, so we got some cool spots to fly in over here near St. Louis. I'll have to pay to get over there, but that's okay. St. Louis International, Kansas City. Let's see, can I find KMCI? Probably anything in this area. Here we go. Oh, 69 nautical miles. Nice. All right, so let's check this one out. I'm going to see if KFTT has a RNAV approach. It has, a, has an LPV approach. Uh, KFTT. Fulton Hensley. So there's a few RNAV approaches here. Uh, this one is a straight in landing, so that's an LNAV. So I'm just browsing these. Here we have an LPV. So here's an LP, LPV approach down all the way to 274 feet. Uh, so that's pretty low. So that's like ILS level minimums almost. So runway 18 is a candidate. And then runway, yeah, just runway 18. All right, so we can do this one and do, uh, we'll just force it to give us runway 18 so we can do the LPV and you know we might end up with a crazy tailwind or something because we're like self-selecting the runway but it's more about looking at the procedure than it is about uh picking the best runway all right so let's do this one k raw to kftt k raw warsaw municipal to kftt program that in here All right, and choose IFR so we can pick our approach. And we want the RNAV 18 because that one has the LPV. This is a similar approach. So we come in from this way and that's a, long, a couple waypoints around to the right. And then one more right turn for the landing. And it looks like there's a bunch of precipitation. So we got some fun stuff to fly through. All right, cool. And we're gonna start on the runway again. Let's go ahead and load our goods. And uh, we're actually going to take a hit in money because of this, because it costs uh, more to travel there than it does that we'll, then we'll get paid. But whatever, it's all good. It's uh, we're doing it out of the kindness of our hearts. Mm Okay, let's pay. 
Get to Kra. We are there. All right, load the stuff. All right, and we're heading to Hensley Memorial KFTT. And the approach is going to be runway 18. So LPV approach. All right, so let's see the altitude they assigned us. 5,000 feet. And it automatically remembers the departure and our squawk code. I'm going to go ahead and turn on automatic AI radio comms. Let the co-pilot do that. Let's turn on the weather map again. And we need some lighting in here. Panel lights. Nope, that's not it. Thought it was the dimmer. Whoa. Lag, lag. All right, we're back. All right, there we go. Turn those down a bit. Got to get the brightness just right. And this is pretty good brightness already. All right, and I'm going to turn on. So it's raining. It's pretty warm out, though, 17 degrees. So I'm going to leave that around. iPad again. Oh, my God. Sorry. I've been, uh, I have to move like the map around too because I'm looking at the procedures. So I'm just like covering up my stream uh, like a newbie. Just have a lot going on. Chat, the game, my streaming software. Got to look at it all. Showing uh, being a total stream noob right now. All right, so climb and maintain 5,000 feet. So I'm going to put that in here up to 5,000. All right, 5,000 feet, and we're going to use flight level change. And we're going to pick 100 knots. Just get up there real fast. And then sync the heading bug by pushing it in the middle here, and then turn on heading mode. And turn on yaw damper for when autopilot goes on. All right, so heading, heading mode is on, flight level change at 100 knots up to 5,000 feet. Autopilot's off, but it's set to heading mode straight ahead, runway heading. So once we take off, we can get up about 500 feet and then turn on autopilot. All right, pedo heat is on, inertial separator is on, and we already got cleared to take off because we loaded it on the runway. There's 60, we need 90. Or sorry, we need 70, I mean. We're already up. Okay, no more runway left, gear up. And flaps up. All right, we're already up 400 feet. Pitching up for a hundred knots. Kansas City Center, day or two, one kilo India Papa is passing 1,500 feet, climbing 5,000 feet. All right, autopilot, do your thing. Continuous plan, nav mode is on. Check the temperature, 19 degrees. It's pretty warm, so we're not worried about icing at 19 degrees. Not until we get down to like five. All right, weather map is on. Gears up, flaps are up. And we're climbing up to 9,291 on the altimeter. We have 2991. Turbine temperature is high, so we'll pull back on the torque. I'm gonna increase our speed just a little bit for the climb up to 110. All right, departed. All 
Alright, let's take a look outside. Uh, it doesn't want me to look outside. It's freezing. Alright, the sim is frozen. Um, not good. <laughs> okay, sim is still frozen. Oh no. Come on. Come on, baby. Come on, sim update four. All right, well, uh, I don't know. I don't know what I did. Oh, it's back. Yes. Oh, struggling. Wow. Well, that was an experience. That's a, that's a cool departure, though. I don't, I'm not complaining about that, but complaining about the freezing. This is cool, though. All right, get over this layer of clouds. We're about to level off here at 5,000. We're gonna be in some heavy weather. Look at that. We're almost gonna be in the red section over there. Not great, Bob. Not great. I mean, this is pretty badass, though. <laughs> this is cool. The lightning is so ridiculously bright, though, like every time it's just like a nuclear explosion goes off. see how the auto uh, or how the flight plan works this time I mean this is a pretty quick flight once we get to this next waypoint we're pretty much already starting our uh, starting our approach procedure right there so so that VOR that's on our map there that's the Hallsville VOR so here's the approach plate. So this is runway 18 RNAV. So we looked at this a very briefly. So LPV approach is what we're flying. So we'll get vertical guidance just like the last one. Hopefully uh, we get the vertical guidance at the final approach fix right here. Zenus. Zenus? Is it Zenus? Don't talk about the length of my Zenus. Uh, and then so before that we're at Yakoi. And we'll be coming in from the west, so up here near the Hallsville VOR. We're going to go to the Hallsville, Hallsville VOR. And then we need to descend to 3,000 feet by the time we get here to Yakoi. And then once we get to Yakoi, we go down to 2,500 by Zenus. And at Zenus, we should have our um, vertical guidance. Attempt number two on the vertical guidance for an LPV approach. And we take that all the way down to 274 feet above the ground. Um, so on the altimeter, that's 1150, 1155 on the altimeter. And then if we have to go missed approach, we climb to 3000, go direct to Euro, which is this waypoint over here to the southeast. Um, and then in a holding pattern there to talk to ATC. All right, it's a pretty fast one. So we're already uh, on our way to the VOR, to that Hallsville VOR right there. So 59 miles, we're cruising, we're going 250 knots ground speed. Outside air temperature, it's still warm. It's still 13 degrees Celsius, so we're good. It's a it's a warm rain night. 
Inertial separator is on because we're only at 5,000 feet. It looks like they're just going to keep us at 5,000 feet. see through a little bit. Not the thickest clouds, but I mean, we wouldn't be able to see a runway unless it had really bright lights. And actually, we can see what lighting system is on the runway. Um, so right here, this little box says what type of lighting system it is. So it's REIL, Pappy Lights on the left side. Whoa. Good God. Um, REIL, I have to look that one up. There's, I know there's like medium intensity one. I forget what REIL is. Uh, let's go back in the cockpit first. So REIL is runway end identifier lights. That's right. Runway end provides rapid and positive identification um, of the end of the runway. Two synchronized unidirectional flashing lights position on each corner of the runway landing threshold. Um, I have on my to-do list to learn more about the different lighting systems that are available. Um, but yeah, so the runway end lights, though, are, you know, at the end of the runway. And then it says that there's Pappy lights on the left side. So there, that's the four four lights in a, in a line on the left side of the runway. And then we'll have end lights at the end of the runway. All right, so we are 48 miles away from... HLV, VOR. Till then, we just have some awesome clouds to fly through. It's kind of creepy. Not really seeing any of the ground anymore. We could see the ground a bit before, but now there's nothing. We had to memorize all the lighting acronyms and what they meant in basic course for the job. Oh, you can't remember any of it anymore. I'm, I know there's... Uh, what's the other one? Like medium intensity runway lighting system or something like that? I think this one is one of the lowest level ones because it's only runway end. Runway end... Um, lighting. So it's literally just at the end of the runway so you know what's at the end. Um, let me see if I can look up the other ones. Yeah, runway end lights. There's... Uh, oh, th this one's like pointing out the different... Um, I'm just looking at an image on the side. Oh, there's ALSF 1 and 2. MALSF. So ALSF says approach lighting system um, with sequenced flashing lights. So that's ALSF. And there's two different levels of that mattering, like kind of how many and, and what the intensity of the lights are. And then it says there's SSALR. Simplified short approach light system with runway alignment. So that one also has leading lights leading you to the threshold. Um, but REIL is like one of the lowest ones. There's ODALs, which even looks better than REIL. REIL is just at the corners of the runway, basically. I mean, we'll see what it looks like. We'll see if it's accurate, too. I'm not sure. Yeah, medium intensity, or sorry, medium intensity approach lighting system with runway alignment indicator lights. <laughs> Feel bad I don't remember any of this, but they also have never brought it up again in over a year. <laughs> I 
I mean, you would just need to know the one at the airport that you're working at, I guess, right? Unless they swap it out for a different system. You just need to learn what the new system is. Damn, that's pretty awesome. Beautiful. Ah, the co-pilot will take care of that. Uh, second in command. Get the radios, bro. Kansas City Center, day or two, one kilo, India Papa, 5,000 feet. Day or two, one kilo, India Papa, Kansas City Center, altimeter, two nine or decimal, eight seven, continue as planned. All right, two nine or eight seven on the altimeter. There we go, all updated. All right, we're getting closer to the VOR here. 33 miles away. Day or Kilo, India Papa, you are tree two miles west. Maintain present heading and altitude. Expect our nav runway one eight approach via Hotel Lima Victor transition. All right, so they want us to do RNAV 18, but the problem is that RNAV 18. Oh, sorry, no, no, RNAV 18 is the one we set up for, so we're good. There were like two, there were three other RNAV approaches at this airport, um, so we just lucked out that the one that we set up for is the one we're doing. Um, but I was going to do it no matter what. I was going to request it regardless of the winds or anything like that, just because it's the only LPV. Uh, approach that's there. So it's the only one that gives us that ILS-like vertical guidance. So we are good. We're already set up for it. So we're also going to the right transition point because we're going from that direction. So yeah, we got it. HLV transition. Clear to HLV. Uh, maintain present heading, altitude. present heading and altitude. So we're good. So I need to keep a better eye out for that, uh, for the glide path this time, because when we hit the final approach fix last time, we were much higher than the, uh, not, not too much higher. I mean, we had to dive a bit to catch up to it, um, but I definitely let it get away from us too much because I thought it would be available where it said it would be available and it was not. So on this one, back on the diagram, back on the approach plate, final approach fix right here is Zenus or Zenus. And that's where we should catch the glide slope at 25 or glide path at 2,500 feet. So 2,500 feet, we just need to remember that. And we're not gonna go missed because it's the sim and we can do what we want, but if we were to go missed, we would climb to 3,000 feet as our first thing and then go direct to Euro right here. UI Euro, Yuri Euro. And the weather's gonna get maybe even a little worse. This could be kind of cool because it shows red right over the airport. Um, let's go ahead and listen to the clouds. I haven't checked the weather yet, so let's go to KFTT on the waypoint down here. Listen to the weather. KFTT, Tango Tango. Frequencies, and we'll find the AWOS. There is no AWOS. So let's check. KJEF next door. Let's see if they have weather. KJEF. All right, there's an AS, an ASOS there, so let's tune into that one. Turn on COM2. Kilo Julia, Echo Foxtrot, automated weather observation 040. Kilo Papa, contact to approach on 124 decimal variability 10. ATC was talking to us at the same time. Alright, switching us over to approach. Approach day or two, one kilo India Papa, five thousand feet. Dollar two one kilo India Papa, approach altimeter two nine or decimal. Two nine or eight seven, we have in continuous plan. Alright, let's go back to that weather. Kilo Julia, Echo Foxtrot, automated weather observation zero four zero zero Zulu. It's right here where the lowest cloud layer is. Visibility is 1 0. 1100, 4100, 12,000. So 1100 is the lowest cloud layer. So that's, we have a good 700 feet of minimums below that. So we're good. 
All right, so yeah, the lowest cloud layer, the bottoms of the lowest cloud layer is um, 1,100 feet. So that's 1,100 feet above the ground. And here are minimums. We can go all the way down to 274 feet uh, AGL. So we're good. We have a good 700, 800 feet below the, between the clouds and our minimum. So we shouldn't have to worry about going missed. Sweet. All right, so we're going to make a right-hand turn at the Hallsville VOR right there, then to Yakui. And let's see, at Hallsville, after we cross Hallsville, we need to go down to 3,000 feet. So they'll probably give us, like the Microsoft Flight Sim ATC is pretty good about reading all the altitudes out to you all the way down to the final approach fix. Realistically, we'd have to remember all of those ourselves. Um, and they would just, you know, clear us to clear us for the approach and we would be responsible for looking at the chart and descending step by step but yeah the ATC does that automatically it'll tell you pretty much all the altitudes every time so we can just listen for that but we do know what they're going to tell us which is go down to 3,000 feet and then after that they're going to tell us to go down to 2,500 feet so we only have those two to remember 3,000 feet when we get to Yaku Yaku Y we go down to 2,500 for the Zenus And what's really nice about the LP, LPV approaches is like, it's already, you know, it's programmed into the G3000. You know, it's gonna receive that information automatically through the WAS enabled Garmin that we have. We don't have to uh, look up a localizer frequency or anything like that. We don't have to switch to nav um, from comm to nav for our navigation source. Um, and we just leave everything how it is. which is awesome. I mean, we had to get a nighttime flight in with some decent cloud coverage. This isn't gonna be as dramatic as the other one. Like, we had pretty good visibility on the other one too. I mean, we were out of the clouds and had a good, um, like 400 feet or so, even though the ADA said that the cloud bottoms were like right at our minimums. Um, so that was good. And this time it's going to be even better. We'll be out of the clouds at by the time we're under 1,100 feet AGL. So we'll be good to go. Outside air temperature is still pretty warm, 12 degrees. So de-icing is off. All right, descend and maintain 3,000 feet. Descend and maintain 3,000 feet, Dayer, Kilo, India, Papa. All right, 3,000. Vertical speed mode. We're gonna go down a thousand feet per minute. Actually in this we can go 1200 feet per minute. So we take our ground speed, 230 knots, multiply by five, we can descend at 1150, so call it 1200. I think this thing can go, I mean this thing can handle down even faster, but that's like the standard three degree descent angle. It's like five times your ground speed. I am going to pull our speed back a bit, though, just to start slowing us down. We're not that far away once we hit this right turn. Okay, zoom in, and I'm going to switch it. Uh, it doesn't matter if I'm on the weather, I guess. It's cool. It's red weather right at the airport, so could be pretty gnarly. See what happens. And hopefully it doesn't turn us around 180 degrees like it did last time. We will uh, find out in a minute. Okay, it's going correctly to the next waypoint. That's good. So it's not taking us back to our previous waypoint. We're going to Yak UI. Okay, cool. So far, so good. I don't know why it did that the last flight. It did the 180 thing twice. Um, I didn't do anything differently this time. So hopefully it behaves. All right, we're already down to 150 knots. And what's the gear down speed in this again? You remember to look that up. I know it's on this little placard right here. Uh, flaps. 
That's the flaps. Landing gear. It's pretty crappy quality. I can't really read what it says. Up at 150, down at, does it say 172? I think it might say 170, 172. So we're already, we're already slow enough to put the gear down. Um, just gonna, we're gonna make this turn first. And I'm just checking the plate again. So by Zenus or Zenus, we need to be at 2,500. So that's gonna be the next call out they give us. So I'm gonna change our altitude selection down to 2,500 in prep for that. All right, zoom the map in a little bit more. And we're going pretty slow. I'm gonna wait until we hit that waypoint to put the gear down. Really, we basically just wanna have the gear down and the, I put the first notch of flaps down before the final approach fix, which is Zenus. So as long as we basically configured for that before we hit the glide slope, especially with the autopilot, cause then we'll just be like ready to just start, you know, that final descent um, for the final, uh, that final glide glide path and follow that down to the runway. So we're already configured for the landing by the time we get to that waypoint. What's really nice about using the autopilot is like, you know, it's going to trim us out automatically. So we'll have the gear down. We'll just watch our throttle, put the first notch of flaps down and then keep an eye on our um, our throttle. And then but when we take it uh, autopilot off, it'll already be trimmed out for that. So all right, there's the 2500. All right, vertical speed mode. Ground speeds 176. Day or two, one kilo India Popper, requesting vector to next waypoint. Oops. Dollar kilo India Popper, continue to Zenny's turning and following heading what? 180. Request vector to next waypoint. Oh, I hit one by accident, I think. Whoops. <laughs> All right. Slowing it down. And I'm gonna arm approach mode. But you can see again, so at Zenis, Zenis, we're supposed to have the glide path and it's below us again. Uh, so this is kind of, this is potentially a problem again. So the, the glide path should be, we should expect to be at the glide path when we're at 2,500 feet, which we're at already, but it's showing that it's below us. I mean, right here, it says right there, Zenis shows the glide path should be available and it's not, so. It's not good, not good. So I'm gonna wait till we get to it, but we're gonna have to dive down again, basically. Um, I mean, unless all of a sudden that diamond pops up to be right at our altitude, uh, we're gonna have to dive down to catch it. So I'm a little worried that uh, I might need to, I mean, I'm not worried, but I might need to reinstall Navigraph if all these approaches are still wrong. All right, so I'm gonna set our altitude down lower so we can catch up to the glide slope. All right, flying over a freeway. All right, so it's untowered, so we're just going down. We're announcing our final, but you can see again, we're again above the glide path, even though it should be at our altitude. So we gotta, we gotta, yeah, Tokyo drifted down again. All right, I think I see the runway light just flashing out there. I saw them once, I don't see them again. All 
All right, now we're catching up to the glide path. So I see the diamond coming into the middle down there. So it's right there. Pulling our throttle out because we're just way too fast right now. And it's not capturing. All right, now we're too low. All right, so it's not capturing the... It's not capturing the vertical guidance again on an L. Oh, it did it before, but it was too low. This time it's too low and it's also uh, not capturing it. So I do have approach mode on on the autopilot. It's not automatically capturing it. Even though it's an LPV RNAV approach, it should be able to capture that. Bummer, man. ILS is still the king right now, I think, in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I mean, I've been working on this RNAV tutorial a little bit. Um, it just must be hit or miss with these uh, with these LNA with these RNAV approaches again, the ones with vertical guidance. So, um, yeah, I am not sure. I don't see the runway lighting just yet. Tango, tango, oh, it connected now. Now it's on. It's on the glide path. Okay, so we caught the glide path at 1,400 feet, 1.4 miles away. We were supposed to catch it 4.9 miles away at 2,500 feet. So there are some issues. <laughs> Oh, there's the runway right in front of us. There are a bunch of issues. I need to uh, drastically cut back on our speed. I mean, we're like at the threshold of the runway already and we barely got the vertical guidance. Um, and I'm, I'm way too fast because I was playing with the autopilot so much. Is it taking us down into trees? It's taking us down way too low. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. All right. Yeah, okay, that's not reliable. <laughs> so I might not be able to do an LPV tutorial uh, as soon as I wanted to. Yeah, that visibility, well, that was that would be awesome if, um, if, the glide, if the glide path was accurate, that would have been a lot cooler. Um, Man, I, I'm gonna have to look at a bunch of other ones over the next day or two, LPV approaches, because if most of these are not, um, if they're not accurate, then I'm gonna have to uh, either have a huge caveat, like warn people that most of the time these won't work, because uh, that seems to be the case that they just, I don't know, it's, it's not good, it's not looking good. The ILS is still very, very reliable compared to, uh, compared to these LPV approaches. And unfortunately we can't use L we can't use VNAV in Microsoft Flight Simulator yet. So really the, on the only option we have for flying an RNAV approach with vertical guidance is to fly the LPV approaches. But um yeah. They are they're not they're not they're not good man. Alright let's deliver our the iron. We lost money on that, but you know we did a service. Bummer. I mean, we got some cool weather to fly through at least, but uh, two sketchy landings because both of the uh, both of the vertical guidances were wrong. Not great, Bob. It's not great. So I'll switch over to our map. Is there any sort of, uh, looks like there's a little turn off at the end of the runway here. I wonder if that's considered parking. I think there was something behind us. So I think what I should do is, um, the first thing I'm gonna test is like, uh, like later tonight or tomorrow before I work on the tutorial more is uh, figure out figure out which of these approaches are worth using 
Um, so I need to try LP, which is a which is a um, lateral guidance only approach with no vertical guidance. And then there's also the L nav. L nav is another one like that, lateral guidance only, and see if those are worth using. Those are going to be more rare than the LPV, though. I mean, the LPV seem pretty common, but they're not reliable right now, so. And then I'll do, actually the first thing I'm gonna do is try it with Navigraph. I'm gonna reinstall Navigraph and see if these same approaches work in Navigraph. If they do, then that can be the recommendation for now is to use Navigraph to uh, do RNAV approaches. But I gotta figure it out. This is just like a little run up area here, something. This is, this is barely anything. What is this? <laughs> There's just a little, this is like a little tiny turnoff right here. Hardly any, uh, yeah, just like a little run up area. All right. Well, that was not as good as I thought it would be. I was, uh, I was pretty excited to try these LPV approaches, but they're kind of doo doo if I'm being honest. Um, yeah. All right. I'm going to shut this down. We got paid. I'm going to call it a night for the stream. So the, the ultralight was pretty fun. It's one of those things where I don't think I'm, I probably won't even fly it again, but it was kind of silly and entertaining. So maybe if I uh, have a night with a couple beers, I want to pull that thing out again. Um, so it was pretty fun. I think I like the top rudder solo better in general. It's just a little more solid. I was having problems steering that the new one in the water. Um, throttle. Throttle. And uh, and apparently I have more research to do on the RNAV approaches so I can actually make a suggestion on what a suggestion suggestion on which ones to fly, because uh, right now I still think <laughs> after flying those two and seeing them both fail with the vertical guidance, I think that ILS is still the way to go um, for now in this sim. Which is a bummer. I want to use all the RNAV approaches. Um, all right, cool. That'll do it for me. Dragon, thanks for hanging out, man. And uh, the rest of you guys, thanks for watching. I will be back this weekend. Um, I'm still working on a tutorial, but after this uh, kind of test run with these L LPV approaches, I'm not sure it's worth making that tutorial yet because most of these seem to be broken, which is a bummer. So um, I'll figure out what I want to do instead. I might uh, just work on my Diamond DA40 guide uh, and maybe a Cessna quick start guide, those kind of things. But at the least, I'll have either a video or I'll be on the stream again this weekend to fly some. Uh, I kind of want to do some Neofly stuff, maybe embarrass myself flying the Airbus H135 helicopter. I've been playing around a bit with that. It supposedly got updated for the new patch already, so it should be working again. And I'd love to fly that thing again. I, I did it off stream all night one night. Probably going to do the same right now for a couple hours and uh, hopefully be good enough to show you guys some helicopter missions over the weekend on another stream. So hope to see you then and uh, thanks for hanging out. Have a good night.